fine. How can I even see that? I can't see anything. <laughs> Same Twitch name? <laughs> Wait, if it's PewDiePie, then write in chat. It's Pew. It's PewDiePie. It's not even PewDiePie. <laughs> nah, it's fake. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, dude. I was joking. <laughs> It takes me to pull the pile. <laughs> because I can't it is. no way. Really? Okay, that saved me 169. Nice. No, stop, dude. When I <laughs> when I click on his name, when I click on the name, no, stop, dude. I'll actually, no way, no way, dude. Why is it? Why doesn't it say he's verified though? When I click on his name, it takes me to pull the pile. It's created 2011. No way, somebody created that account to troll back then. <laughs> oh my god, no way. Oh, uh, this is too funny. Okay, if they make me laugh, fuck it, why not? Dude, 69, no. <laughs> no, no, I, that does not count. That does not count. That does not count. That does not count. All right, I get three strikes. Oh my God, this fucking clip. Yeah, I, I didn't realize he had magnets. Okay, I know what magnets are. I know what magnets are. Oh, sorry. I definitely know what magnets are. Trust me. Oh, oh, that's gonna hurt. Oh no. Why? <laughs> Those legs are... <laughs> That does not count either, because uh, I say so. It's been six months since I put this on a welder at work. No one has said anything. It's a magnet with Sharpie on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> and you suggest that on the welder, please? Thank you. That's funny, right? All right, fine. There it is. Hey, Brad. Hello, I'm Beth. PewDiePie just tipped $168.99. Are you serious? What? I will eat five of these in one bite if if so if it is actually PewDiePie. <laughs> so Cause oh my god, no. Oh. Okay, I don't know really again. I, I, <laughs> last time, um, he just tipped again. So for fun of it, thank you. Did you not get my message? Uh -huh. Learning French. Menu. Small. New. <laughs> right. Murmur. Mute, mute. A right blackberry murmurs to the wall. Good meme. <laughs> what? <laughs> happened? I'm just confusing uh, people. Was that a misclick? No. Was that a misclick? Um, yo, Felix, what the hell? <laughs> Thank you she so knows much me. For That's great. Right. I hope it. W I, I, was that a misclick? Like, I can refund it. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. What the hell? I don't even. Oh, she doesn't know, know who. I. She. You have to write Felix. That's funny. She said she doesn't know I'm PewDiePie. I was like, Yo, wait. She knows my name is Felix. Or not. I can refund it, but dude. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Wait. No mis. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 I'm literally just doing it. I'm just making a cursed texture pack. All right. Oh Bonjour, mes amis. I really we back at it with some Borderlands. It's been a while. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to listen to anything in the background. I'll probably put something on and then turn it down. We'll see. Um go to my watch later uh, monsters in Paris no nah. no wait I didn't save it to my watch later uh oh uh ewu ewu true crime they have a little new most twisted cases we ever heard let's Person jump into it God damn, that's loud though. The chilling voicemail you just heard. All right. Serena playing 
Warzone. My favorite streamer, Serena. Let's see. DLC. Oh, maybe I'll play my my Craig. You know what? Yeah, let's play some Craig. Hmm. Nah. Let's play some DLC. Or is he gonna go with ultimate? Let's see if let's see how bad it is. How bad it is. I'm at the bunker, huh? I'll farm him once. Audio, and we'll put sound and dialogue up on it. Pimp Master, what's up? Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the stream. Uh, what is your name, Angela? If you don't mind me asking, if you don't want to expose yourself on stream. I can just call you Pimp. Yo, pimp. What up, pimp? What up, pimp? Cool story, bro. Trying to play some Borderlands or Dead by Daylight right now? I'm down for whatever. We just climbed to level 80s. So freaking slow. Uh, come on, Bunker, where you at? Probably gonna go to the top, so let's just head up there. It's the climb. Whoops, I tapped out. Honestly, I haven't even been paying attention to the video. Ooh. What the? And ah, oh, come on, bunk. No! Oh my! Oh my lord!
<sighs> no comment. Does the flag reach him from here or nah? Nah. Oh, kind of. But it's not as fast as or reliable here. Um, I'm kind of down to play my cycle build in and play on your game if you're down, Tim. Na 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 I'm just gonna stop the video honestly. Wanna put some music in the background but I don't wanna do it. I don't want my whole shit to be silenced because this one in the VODs if it detects copyrighted music it just automatically or at least I think it automatically uh, just silences that music. Or, like, the entire segment in which that music was playing. So you wouldn't be able to hear the game, nor myself talking. So, we'll just play in silence for now. I guess. For the game audio. Damn, who else plays Borderlands? Jib doesn't, I don't think Jib has PC. Ah, uh, Jib. There's this one foo who dropped by in the stream, but I just helped him level up a bit. Whatever. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be a little, a little niche community. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And Psycho, Psycho. Uh, is he Psycho Master? Either way. Oh, Gone Bloody Psycho. Yeah, there we go. Gone Bloody Psycho on Twitch. Check him out. He plays Borderlands too. He's playing, uh, he's running through Tina's Wonderland right now. Pretty epic. Check him out. <sighs> Kinda wanna play Apex, but I'm not gonna rage really bad at that game because I'm booty cheeks. So let's check out. On the greens. Is 
seven millis. Seven milli, seven milli, a milli, a milli, a milli, a milli. Destroy this guy with the grenades. Oh god, I muted your tab by accident. Didn't miss anything. Uh, I was just asking if you were down to play, play anything. I'm down to hop on my psycho build because I haven't uh, played psycho in a bit. I'm down for Dead by Daylight. Uh, I'm down to just hop on and farm the bunker if you want. Could hop up my game, play some DLC. Try to farm some legendaries, maybe. Oh, we could try Terramorphus again. Also, you're not streaming your BL2, you're streaming a notchily colored screen. What? God damn it. Okay, I was streaming the launcher. Rip. There we go. What the? Who, who, who the hell is this person? Joining my, joining my game just like that without even asking. Talk about rude. Talk about inviting yourself to the party, am I right? Let's go! Yes, sir. Gonna cry. I'm sorry, that was mean. Ah, you're so lucky. Nah, you're so lucky. Nah, 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 nah. La. <laughs> I'm just good. What's the push to talk again? T? I don't know. Hello, hello? Did it H? E? Uh, T. You want to farm the bunker for yeah, a bit? Angelica. Wait, what? Do you, do you want to farm the, bur okay, the bunker? Okay, my game was too loud and I couldn't hear you. What is it? Do you want to? The, do you want to farm the bunker for a bit? Do I want what? <coughs> to farm Le Bunker. L Bunker. El Bunkero. Sure. <laughs> let's do it. Alright, let's do it. Where did she spawn? Is she here yet? Did she spawn? Oh, 
Oh, there she is. Hello. Whoops. Hello. <sighs> I need to get a face cam. I'm not gonna lie, to be honest. Just gonna get more views if I had a face cam. Got a big turret. God damn. Dunskis. Mine was kind of a slept on class, not gonna lie. His turrets with the rockets and the flag are just too good. His kill skills? I really like his kill skills. <sighs> I need some energy, bro. I need some coffee or something. Got him. Mm, interesting. I'll take it. My storage at. Got 
have six slots. Squeeze money. Let's see. Yeah, can I have a legendary, please? This purging fighter. Nah. Doughboy booster shield. All right, looks like no legendary. Let's go again. Ugh. Also, congratulations to Pitmaster for reaching level 61. It's always nice to see a homie level up. Man, I need to go follow that streamer that we played with on Dead by Daylight. I forgot what their name was. There was Fire, I think. And then, damn it. I think, no, nah, I didn't even stream that. Dang it. He responded over there. Ammo.
distracted by the lasers here. Um. Uh. Is there a turret alive? I think so. Let's go. Oh god, I almost fell there. I can't reach the bunker from here. Lame. God, get in the box. Give me ammo power loader. Wow. Give me ammo gun loader. Thank you. <clears throat> what? Dude, I'm getting shrek to this round. Bunker, go to your safe space, bro. No! She was so young. Pressing F. I don't know what the what the what the chat button is, man. C, C B N M. Nope. Out of ammo. What the? What? Nani Deska? What? How come? Don't tell me. I think I'm buzzard sniped my kill, bro. I literally brought him to a sliver of health and I'm pretty sure buzzard just sniped my kill. Is it R, Y? It's Y. There we go. Let's buy some bubble right here. Whilst we're here. We still have seven anyway. Let's go we're at three and a half bars, only three, six and a half bars left to go. Ah, uh, the bunker throat up. Throwed it up. Oh God. Yeah, can I have a legendary please? Please, can I have a legendary please? Yeah, 
You gain zero ex Oh! You need to buy the, uh, the Lilith Sanctuary expansion pack to, uh, get past level 50, 61. Yeah, it's kind of bullshit. You need to buy DLC to keep leveling up. I realized that too, like, after I killed the bunker one or two times. Yeah. I know, bruh. Damn. So if you're not leveling up, then I feel like... Ah, uh, I feel bad now. I'll keep hunting for good weapons or some. I don't know. Let's go. Ever fought a siren before? Interesting. Wow. Wow. <laughs> All right, that's one one. That's one one. Ah, she got me. Come on. Ah. Okay. GG's. GG's. Well played. Well played. Alright. Let's restart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, that was just childish. I apologize for that. I got a new chair like a few days ago, and I'm already starting to make it squeak, bro. <sighs> God, I'm fat. <sighs> nah, I'm just big. I'm a bit chubby. I wouldn't call myself obese. You know, a fat is kind of a mean term. My friend told me the other day that he doesn't like calling people or saying the word fat at all. Because he feels like it'll trigger some people. I'm like, bro, but you're just stating facts. But I don't know. After just calling myself fat right there, I, I kind of feel bad now. I know where he's coming from. Anyhow. Ooh. Let's say hello to my old bunk mate. Like and subscribe if you got that joke. What the hell? That XP exploder wanted me. I agree, man. I completely agree. Chest unlocked already. Yeah, I think so. Those were the fuck big. Big ass jack guy. Big dog. A Y, a singular Y in the chest. Bruh.
Get out of the box. Do you have Overwatch pimp? Or do you play it at all? La damn. from mouse line. Can she get the snipe? Can she get the snocks the shotgun snipe? Oh god. Oh god. Okay. Okay. I play too much, I understand. Oh keep me up, keep me up, keep me up. Oh. Alright, we're fine. Juicy Hulk. <laughs> Looks 
Like that's it. Grab that health. A little ammo. Um, nothing great. Let's try again. Good, uh, good, good advertising. Alright, for sure, pimp. Uh, sheesh. Um. Let's see. How was my day? I don't know. <clears throat> I woke up a little bit ached in the back and neck. And then I went back to sleep for a little bit. I woke up again, got on social media, and I just got a little bit angry. Uh, definitely trying to keep, uh, definitely trying to use social media a little bit, a little bit less. Because honestly, some things that people say on there just so really upsets me. So I decided to go. To, I decided to go in the go in my backyard and just chill out with my dog, do a little bit of chores, and I cooled off. And I decided to hop on here and play some Borderlands. How was your day? shredded oh punk Looks like no legendary. Oh, we got an E Tech though. The maximized dart. A Hyperion, a Hyperion RPG, huh? That's kind of interesting. I don't think I've seen too many of those, honestly. What the heck? Uh, I'm gonna take it because it's a uh, no, not that. I'm gonna take it because like I like E Tech weapons. Wait, I already have the maximized dart. Wait, what the hell? Oh, dude, I'm tripping, man. <laughs> I was reading, I was reading the description for the Maximize Dart pistol that was behind or under the uh, the uh, rocket launcher here. I'm 
I'm a bit special. The Dobby Droog. Don't know. Don't know. Take <clears throat> Let's see. Yesterday night, pretty disgusting. So today you felt drained AF. <laughs> you were tired. Crying like a little bitch. Got your... Um, uh, I don't know if I can say that on stream. I'm sure I can. Uh, fuck it, I'm just gonna do it. Got my period on top of that. Ouch, I'm sorry. I Paul, I'm, I'm so sorry for that. <laughs> and on top of that, so I decided to grind League all day and turn my brain off. Wow. Also off topic, off topic, but I gotta compliment your voice. It's very soothing. Thank you. Wow. I've never gotten a compliment like that before. Thank you. Oh, oh, my heart, my heart. Soothing voice. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> no, don't inflate my ego. Stop. I think that's that's one of the best compliments I've gotten. One of the next ones being that I'm actually pretty funny. And was that you that said that as well? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. But I really do like when people say that I'm funny because, uh, I don't know. I just love bringing, I don't want to be the guy that's like, I love bringing smiles to people's faces. I I guess I'd say I love seeing people smile and laugh because I love I love laughing and smiling myself, you know. So if I could just make someone's day a little bit brighter, as cliche as that is. I like that. And then mission accomplished, you know. Of course you can say the word period on stream. I'm gonna throw some fists if Trish really is that much of a snowflake. I don't think I told you you are funny, but I totally agree. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I think it was Jib that told me. That told me that. Thank you, Jib. Shout out to Jibber Jabber. Shout out to uh, Gone Bloody Psycho as well. Shout out to Pitmaster. Uh, somebody that always brightens up my day is... This person, I don't want to call him a character because it's not really a character, but he's kind of a character. Uh, but I put, I dropped him in the chat. He always makes my day a little bit brighter. Because, <laughs> I mean, he, he makes me laugh. And uh, people in the comments say it a lot, but he really does have a big heart for for a man such as himself. All right, we're now at three, four, five and a half bars. We are one, two, three, four. Yeah, five and a half bars. We need four and a half left to level up. <sighs> I'm getting a little tired of farming bunker here. I think I'm going to farm until level 66 and then play the DLC. Go back to the DLC. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Before that, I'm going to take a quick bathroom break. And we'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. <clears throat> Apologize for the dead air and dead gameplay, but we are we are back. And you know what? We're gonna put on some Ewu True Crime, baby. Cause I am in the mood. All right, this is most twi twisted cases you've ever heard, episode eight. Let me know if it's too loud. I'm also gonna be turning off. Also gonna be turning off. Uh, one of the only clues left all game sounds. A baffling case that still remains a mystery to this day. Our story begins in the very early hours of September 7th, 2015. 31-year-old Henry McCabe, an employee of the Department of Revenue in Moundsview, Minnesota, was at a nightclub with his friends. Earlier, Henry had spent the entire day with William Kennedy, and Kennedy was the last person to ever see Henry. It was just after 2 a.m. when he dropped Henry off at a local gas station's convenience store, a Super America, that wasn't too far from the club where they had spent the Super evening. Super America. What exactly happened next has you remained a, a point of speculation for years. Right off the bat, something wasn't quite right. Kennedy had Henry's keys, while another friend had his wallet. Presumably, they were all meant to meet up again, and Kennedy later claimed he took his keys to stop Henry from driving home impaired. But what all of this meant was that when Henry went to the convenience oh, store, he side. didn't have any identification on him or the keys to his house. So there was no real way for him to get home. That same night, Kareem McCabe, Henry's wife, was away in California. The couple had been married for 11 years, and they had two children together, a one-year-old and a 10-year-old. Kareem woke the following day to find that mysterious voicemail you heard earlier left on her phone from her husband at 2.28 a.m. The voicemail appears to be an accidental pocket dial and is almost entirely undecipherable noises, including growls and grunts for two minutes straight. For an unknown reason, just a short fragment of Henry's last voicemail has ever been publicly released. And only those close to the case have heard the entire two minutes. Though this hasn't been verified, some have speculated that Henry's family requested that the full voicemail not be shared with the public. The only clear sound is a voice that cuts through to say, stop it. Then the call ends. No one has heard from Henry since. Just dropping uh, he was some credit in the chat. Missing the next day. Considering the odd circumstances, the police determined that his disappearance was highly suspicious. Immediately, investigators and volunteers began tracing the possible routes Henry may have taken from the convenience store. But they didn't find Henry or any clues about what happened to him. Since he was last seen just after 2 a.m. and the voicemail was left at 2.28... Whatever happened to Henry during the voicemail was just moments after Kennedy dropped him off. With that in mind, and the fact that he was on foot, there should have been some clue to his fate near the convenience store. But nothing turned up. The next step was to try and trace the pings of his cell phone. It was uncovered that his phone had pinged off towers in Spring Lake Park, Fridley, and New Brighton, which somewhat narrowed down the search. Despite this development, it seemed like Henry had simply vanished into thin air. He didn't turn his phone back on, there was no activity in his bank account, and he never tried to contact his work, friends, or family. So, the only real clue investigators had was that strange voicemail. Kareem was sure that some of the sounds she heard had come from her husband because she recognized his voice, but the other noises, well, that's all up for debate. Some were certain they heard a gunshot in the background of the call. Had Henry been shot and killed? If so, by who? Something else was apparent in the voicemail. A single word, a name, Papus, which was a nickname for Henry's friend Kennedy. The question was, had Henry been calling for help from his friend, or was there something more sinister afoot? Everything changed in November 2015, about eight weeks after Henry had gone missing. A recreational kayaker on Rush Lake in New Brighton made a gruesome discovery. New Brighton in the water, is in The England? kayaker noticed a human body floating near some brush. <laughs> Because the body was found all right, I rolled myself in blankets and got my coffee. True crime is on, Borland is on. I call it perfection. Found, Hell, yes. The body appeared to have been in the water for some time, but following an investigation by the medical examiner, it was positively identified as Henry McCabe. What might be the strangest twist of all is that the medical report said that Henry's death did not appear to be suspicious because there were no signs of trauma or foul play. Despite the voicemail, there were no gunshot wounds or injuries. Uh, but his exact cause of death was still undetermined. Although this was puzzling, what was most confusing was the question. <sighs> you really do be like that sometimes. Lake, especially on foot. The lake where he was found is at least God six damn. miles from where he was dropped off at the store. 
which would easily take over an hour to walk. Since Henry was drinking that night, it likely took much longer. This is, of course, possible, except that the voicemail caught the sound of moans and screams just a short 20 minutes after he was dropped off. So what happened that led him to the lake? If you become non-responsive, you fell asleep, for sure. Forward. He accidentally drowned, right? That is exactly what the police theorized, saying that Henry's probable cause of death was drowning in fresh water. Except mm -hmm. it always comes back to that mysterious voicemail. David Singleton, the chief executive of Minnesota Community Policing Services, has said, I don't believe the idea that he just wandered that far on his own, and the audio doesn't support the idea that his death is not suspicious. The voicemail was sent to the FBI to aid in the analysis and to try and clean up the audio, but no helpful information ever arose. As investigators continued looking into the case, they found that they had one of the most crucial details wrong from the beginning. It turns out that the location Kennedy gave for where he dropped Henry off was actually incorrect. The police found video surveillance that showed it was a holiday gas station at a different location and not a Super America. Slight difference, Ooh. right? And Ooh. an easy mistake to make, especially after a night of partying, except that this kind of detail meant everything in Henry's case. There might have been evidence at the correct location if the police had been looking at the right spot from the beginning. The actual gas station Henry was dropped off at was about three miles away from where investigators originally thought. It was much farther from his house, but closer to where his body was discovered. Still, it was likely about a four-mile walk from the Holiday gas station to Rush Lake, which wouldn't have been an easy feat for Henry. During the investigation, Kennedy eventually handed over Henry's keys and wallet, but he never offered an explanation for why he dropped Henry off at the convenience store rather than simply back at home. As for giving the wrong location, well, that has just been explained as a mistake. Kennedy made no more right. about Henry's disappearance. Bunker's going in a final on. phase. The fact that he didn't give any kind of explanation as to why he left Henry at the gas station instead of taking him home is a red flag. Most people who are the last person to see a missing person alive, especially when it's a friend, would want to do everything possible to help with the investigation. It's possible that giving the wrong gas station location was a genuine mistake. But it's also possible that it was done on purpose to mislead police. Yeah, that's if Kennedy what I really was concerned enough that he took Henry's keys to stop him from driving under the influence as he claimed, it seems highly questionable that he would then leave him miles from home with no money or identification. Unfortunately, with no additional information, we can only speculate about what happened. The bizarre voicemail does suggest that there is much more to this case than an accident. Is it possible to volume up but true Kennedy crime the only for you? Who may have misled uh, yeah, players, I got you. Whether accidentally or not, the Minnesota Community Policing Services initially offered a $10,000 reward for information about Henry's case, but they removed it after a falling out with Henry's wife, Kareen. Singleton alleged that the decision was made because of, quote, her willingness to mislead the public and good? this committee. The exact alleged misleadings have never been publicly released, but Karina's has maintained that she has been honest with the police throughout the investigation. With such little information, there are multiple theories about what happened to Henry, and some are more plausible than others. Investigators have looked into the possibility that Henry's death was an accident, or that he'd intentionally taken his own life by drowning. His wife has said that she doesn't buy that idea, saying, I don't think somebody would just drown himself. Somebody was inflicting harm. However, other theories, mostly shared online on Reddit, are that Henry's death was caused by an animal attack, or that the growling on the voicemail was really the sounds of screaming from underwater or gurgling. Others think that the clicking noise is a taser gun, and that the voice may be garbled because Henry had just been tased. All of this is guesswork, but with so many questions still remaining in the case, Namely, what was really happening during that eerie voicemail. People can't help but wonder about the truth. And the truth is something that we just may never know. With that, let's move on to our second case of the day. One that's a good reminder that sometimes things aren't always as they seem. Because sometimes they're much, much worse. Difference between... On the evening of November 27th, 2010, a Royal Canadian Mounted Police officer was sitting on the back roads near Vanderbilt, <clears throat> British Columbia, Canada, when they noticed a vehicle speeding out of I a remote logging road. This was especially odd because the area over, was known uh, to be quiet, especially at 9.45 p.m. 
there was no reason for a truck to be speeding. So, following a hunch, the officer pulled the truck over in a routine traffic stop. But what happened next was nothing close to routine. The driver was 20-year-old Cody Lechbakov. He likely would have been let off with a warning for speeding, except for one thing. When the officer approached the truck, they saw what looked like a smear of blood on Cody's face. But that's not all. There was also blood on Cody's legs and what looked like a pool of blood in the truck. The Fourth Amendment's protection against unlawful search and seizure prohibits arbitrary vehicle searches by police. If the police search your car without a warrant, your permission, or a valid reason, they're violating your constitutional rights. However, there are some situations in which police can search a car without a warrant or your consent. I mean, now it's a tiny bit too loud compared to your voice, but uh, I feel like I'm bothered. Nah. I mean, I don't want to be the bother, bro. I want you to hear this. And I also don't want to, like, talk over it either. But I also want to hear it too. You know what? I'm going to turn it up for myself. And then turn it down a little bit on the, s on the stream. You are whiny. Don't even, don't even, don't even lie to me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I could do sound check too. Let's see. Sound check. And when it comes to vehicle searches, courts generally give police more leeway compared to when police test, are attempting test, to test, search test, a test, resident. Test. This it's is because harder. under the harder automobile exception to the search warrant requirement, courts have recognized that individuals uh, have a lower expectation of privacy when driving a car than when they're in their homes. Feeling. Police can conduct warrantless searches of your vehicle under the... Alright, now that's a bit loud. Hmm. Turn it down The following circumstances. You've given check, the officer check, check. consent to do so. Alright, what if I turn myself up? The officer has probable cause the to believe there's cause. evidence of a crime in your vehicle. It's just so loud with both of us. Talking like that. Okay. Or you can leave it like the this. officer reasonably believes a search is necessary for the test test. Okay, that's not good. Their own protection, a hidden weapon, for example. All right, I think that's good. And if you've been arrested, and the search is related to that arrest, such as a search for illegal drugs. Seeing the blood, the officer called for backup, and he was joined by a second officer. Mm, Together, they lucky. searched the truck, where they also found tools that looked like they were covered in blood. But here's the thing. Cody immediately told the officers what had happened. He had a perfectly reasonable, if illegal, explanation for the blood and his speeding. Cody said he had just been poaching and killed a deer by clubbing it to death. He was speeding away from the crime when he was pulled over. When officers asked him why exactly he clubbed a deer to death, he reportedly said simply, I'm a redneck, that's what we do for fun. Unsurprisingly, Cody was arrested under the Canada Wildlife Act for poaching. But something was missing. There was no deer carcass in Cody's truck, as one would expect with a poacher, because that was the whole point, wasn't it? So, where was the deer? A conservation officer who had experienced tracking Let's animals go. was called in to find the deer while Cody was taken into custody. The officer began tracing the tire tracks of Cody's truck back up the remote side road he'd been fleeing from. There, in the fresh snow, he found footprints. As he followed the tracks, he expected to find the body of a deer, but instead, he stumbled upon something he never expected to see. Partially buried near a gravel pit was the body of a young woman. The girl's pants had been pulled down, and she appeared to have injuries to her head. She was already dead by the time the officer found her. It was 15-year-old Lauren Don Leslie. The teen was legally blind as she didn't have any vision in one of her eyes and only about 50% vision in the other. Lauren's body was left near a highway known in Canada as the Highway of Tears, an area notorious Wait, for young women going missing. Did the last story already killed. end or oh. did I miss something here? To see a missing person alive, especially when it's a friend, would want to do everything possible to help with the investigation. Okay, this is why it's I possible that giving the wrong gas station location was a genuine mistake, We're but it's also possible here, that it mind. was done on purpose to mislead police. If Kennedy really was concerned enough that he took Henry's keys to stop him from driving under the influence as he claimed, it seems highly questionable that he would then leave him miles from home with no money or identification. 
Unfortunately, with no additional information, we can only speculate about what happened. The bizarre voicemail does suggest that there is much more to this case than an accidental drowning. But Kennedy wasn't the only person who may have misled investigators, whether accidentally or not. The okay. Minnesota Community Policing Services initially well, offered else. a $10,000 reward for information about Get Henry's case, but they removed it after a falling out with Henry's wife, Corrine. Singleton alleged that the decision was made because of, quote, her willingness to mislead the public and this committee. The exact alleged misleadings have never been publicly released, but Corrine has maintained that she has been honest with the police throughout the investigation. With such little information, there are multiple theories about what right, happened so to Henry, and some are more too. plausible than others. Investigators have looked into the possibility that Henry's death was an accident, or that he'd intentionally taken his own life by drowning. His wife has said that she doesn't buy that idea, saying, I don't think somebody would just drown himself. Somebody was inflicting harm. However, other theories, mostly shared online on Reddit, are that Henry's death was caused by an animal attack, or that the growling on the voicemail was really the sounds of screaming from underwater or gurgling. Others think that the clicking noise is a taser gun and that the voice may be garbled because Henry had just been tased. All of this is guesswork, but with so many questions still remaining in the case, namely what was really happening during that eerie voicemail, people can't help but wonder about the truth. And the truth is something that we just may never know. With that, let's move on to our second case of the day. Okay, so that one, was it. So that one remains unsolved, that sometimes I guess. Things aren't always as they seem. Because Rip, sometimes RIP Henry. They're much, much worse. On the evening of November 27th, 2010, a Royal Canadian Mounted Police officer was sitting on the back roads near Vanderhoof, British Columbia, Canada, when they noticed a vehicle speeding out of a remote logging road. This was especially odd because the area was known to be quiet, especially at 9.45 p.m. There was no reason for a truck to be speeding. So, following a hunch, the officer pulled the truck over in a routine traffic stop. But what happened next was nothing close to routine. The driver was 20-year-old Cody Lechbakoff. He likely would have been let off with a warning for speeding, except for one thing. When the officer approached the truck, they saw what looked like a smear of blood on Cody's face. But that's not all. There was also blood on Cody's legs and what looked like a pool of blood in the truck. The Fourth Amendment's protection against unlawful search and seizure prohibits arbitrary vehicle searches by police. If the police search your car without a warrant, your permission, or a valid reason, they're violating your constitutional rights. However, there are some situations in which police can search a car without a warrant or your consent. When it comes to vehicle searches, courts generally give police more leeway mm, compared to when police are attempting to search a residence. This is because under the automobile exception to the search warrant requirement, courts have recognized that individuals have a lower expectation of privacy when driving a car than when they're in their homes. Police can conduct warrantless searches of your vehicle under the following circumstances. You've given the officer consent to do so. The officer has probable cause to believe there is evidence of a crime in your vehicle. The officer reasonably believes a search is necessary for their own protection, a hidden weapon, for example, and if you've been arrested and the search is related to that arrest, such as a search for illegal drugs. Seeing the blood, the officer called for backup, and he was joined by a second officer. Together, they searched the truck, where they also found tools that looked like they were covered in blood. But here's the thing. Cody immediately told the officers what had happened. He had a perfectly reasonable, if illegal, explanation for the blood and his speeding. Cody said he had just been poaching and killed a deer by clubbing it to death. He was speeding away from the crime when he was pulled over. When officers asked him why exactly he clubbed a deer to death, he reportedly said simply, I'm a redneck, that's what we do for fun. Unsurprisingly, Cody was arrested under the Canada Wildlife Act for poaching. But something was missing. There was no deer carcass in Cody's truck as one would expect with a poacher, because that was the whole point, wasn't it? So, where was the deer? A conservation officer who had experienced tracking animals was called in to find the deer while Cody was taken into custody. The officer began tracing the tire tracks of Cody's truck back up the remote side road he'd been fleeing from. There, in the fresh snow, he found footprints. As he followed the tracks, he expected to find the body of a deer, but instead, he stumbled upon something he never expected to see. Partially buried near a gravel pit was the body of a young woman. 
The girl's pants had been pulled down, and she appeared to have injuries to her head. She was already dead by the time the officer found her. It was 15-year-old Lauren Don Leslie. 15 the teen was legally years. blind as she didn't have any vision in one of her eyes and only about 50% vision in the other. Lauren's That's body was left up. near a highway known in Canada as the Highway of Tears, <coughs> an area notorious for young women going missing or being <coughs> killed. Excuse Following me. an autopsy, it was confirmed that Lauren had died from blunt force trauma to her head and blood loss from her wounds. If there was any doubt that Cody had been fleeing from the area of Lauren's body, Investigators reportedly found a monkey backpack inside his truck, as well as a wallet with a children's hospital card that had the name Lauren Leslie on it, a pair of glasses that belonged to Lauren, Lauren's phone, and a ring her father had made for her with all the birthstones of their family. At first, Cody explained that he'd found Lauren by accident, already dead, while he was out poaching in the woods. But this wasn't true. Police checked his phone and realized that not only had they known each other before he found her body, but that Lauren and Cody had exchanged text messages back and forth planning to meet up that very night. <laughs> the two had met on the social media site Nexopia, where Cody messaged Lauren first. After chatting for a bit, they exchanged phone numbers before they agreed to meet in person. That evening, before meeting Lauren, Cody bought a four-pack of Kahlua mudslides, a four-pack of white Russians, and a pack of cigarettes. Keep in mind, Lauren was 15, and it was not legal for her to consume alcohol. Providing alcohol to a minor is typically punished as a misdemeanor offense. However, the crime may also be considered a felony depending on the circumstances of the case and the state or country in which it occurs. The difference between a misdemeanor and a felony offense typically rests on whether anyone was seriously injured or killed as a result of the illegal supplying of alcohol. Felony offenses can also result when a person has committed repeated offenses. When presented with this information, Cody changed his story, admitting that they had hung out together. He claimed the two had engaged in what he described as consensual intercourse, though of course, with Lauren being a minor and Cody an adult, this couldn't be consensual. Their text messages also contradicted Cody's story. Just before they actually met, Cody told Lauren not to tell anyone that they were going to hang out, and she replied in a text, well, we're just hanging out, right? Nothing inappropriate which contradicted Cody's claim they had a consensual encounter. But none of this actually explained how Lauren died and ended up being left down a lonely logging road. Cody once again told the police another story. As you'll see, it would turn out that he told a lot of stories. This time, though, he said that as they drove down the road where her body was found, Lauren suddenly became agitated. He claimed she was so worked up that she started hitting herself with a wrench from his truck and then stabbed herself with a knife in an attempt to take her own life. Cody said that after hitting herself, Lauren got out of his truck and disappeared from his view. He found her lying on her stomach with a knife next to her. She was still alive but appeared to be dying, so he claimed that he struck her twice in the head with the wrench to put her out of her misery. What a nice guy. <laughs> then he just left her body there and sped away. I believe it. The discovery of Lauren's body opened up a whole other investigation that no one saw coming. While Cody was in custody, uh, so investigators started looking closely at his apartment. And while there, they found something curious. A pickaxe. This wasn't too surprising, but when the pickaxe was tested for DNA evidence, it came back that it had traces of human blood on it. And not only that, but the blood's DNA also had a match, though not to Lauren, as one may assume. Instead, it matched a woman whose body had been found on October 8, 2010, in a park on the outskirts of Prince George. The woman was 35-year-old Cynthia Francis Moss. What the heck? She was what? last seen on September 10, 2010, My turrets are a in month the before stairs. her body was found. Bruh. Police have said that Cynthia was involved with drugs and prostitution. So, how had Cynthia's DNA ended okay. up on a well, pickaxe in Cody's apartment? Well, that explanation will come later because it wasn't the only piece of DNA evidence investigators found. Obviously, after discovering the pickaxe, the police wanted to be extremely thorough with everything else in Cody's apartment. So, after testing his shirts, shorts, bed sheets, a comforter, and even another axe, they found more DNA. This DNA was matched to another person entirely, 23-year-old Natasha Lynn Montgomery, a young woman who was missing. Natasha was last seen as she left a friend's house in Prince George in August of 2010. Natasha's body was never found, but now that her DNA was discovered at Cody's apartment, police were confident she'd befallen the same fate as Lauren and Cynthia and was likely deceased. Oh, but that's not all. 
If you thought all of that was crazy, just wait. When running Cody's DNA through police databases, investigators found that he matched a semen sample collected from a body, but not Cynthia's or Lauren's. No, Cody's DNA was found on the body of 35-year-old Jill Stachenko. Jill had disappeared from Prince George on October 9, 2009. At the end of the month, on the 26th, her body was uncovered where it had been half buried in a gravel pit just outside of the city. Lauren, Jill, and Cynthia had all suffered blunt force trauma to their heads, as well as other wounds. All the women, except for Lauren, were characterized in the news as drug users and sex workers. Cody was now connected to the deaths of four different young women, all killed within the last two years, but nothing about him would make you think he was the kind of person to do something like this, at least from the outside. For one, his childhood had been typical. Growing up, Cody got along with his parents and siblings. He worked in a sawmill run by his grandfather and his great uncle, and he had an active social life playing hockey, hunting, and fishing. At the time that he was arrested, he worked as a mechanic at a Ford dealership. As the news broke, Cody became known as the country boy killer for the comments he made when he was first pulled over. A key characteristic of a psychopath is the ability to blend in to normal society. Psychopaths are often charming and well-liked by others. They may have stable employment and appear to have relationships with family and friends. However, this is all an elaborate act. A true psychopath can form an emotional attachment to other people, but they are very good at pretending. Another trait of a psychopath is pathological lying, which is seen in this case with Cody changing his story multiple times. Promiscuous relations, lack of remorse, and lack of empathy are additional psychopathic traits. Cody was charged with the first-degree murder of all four women, and the case went to trial. Throughout, he remained impassive, never showing any signs of emotion, and it was in court that the rest of Cody's stories came out. His lawyer argued that Cody should be found guilty of second-degree murder, not first. This was because Cody freely admitted that he was involved in the deaths of the three women. He stuck to his story about Lauren, claiming she went flying off the handle that night and had been the one to take her own life while in his truck. Failing to accept responsibility for one's actions is another psychopathic trait. For the other three, Cody argued that he wasn't the one who did the actual killing. Instead, he said that it was a drug dealer and two other accomplices who killed each of the women on different occasions, but he refused to name them because he was afraid of retribution if he did. Even when the judge threatened that he would be held in contempt of court if he didn't say who the other men were, Cody refused. Apparently, he didn't want to be labeled as a rat while in prison and told the court that revealing their names was just not in the cards. There is no legal obligation to snitch on your accomplices. However, a defendant could be charged with contempt of court if they agree to disclose information in accordance with a plea agreement and then refuse to do so. Even though he never named the alleged real killers, Cody still told the court a few tall tales. In one, he said that after a party, Jill had stayed to hang out at his apartment with a few other people. He said that as they were in another room, an unnamed person told him that Jill had to be killed because she owed a lot of money. Cody, who said he tried cocaine for the first time that night, claimed to have just handed the person a pipe from his toolbox and then simply watched as this other person hit Jill in the head with it and then choked her to death. Cody alleged that his only involvement was breaking Jill's cell phone in half, carrying her body with this other person into his truck, and then dumping her corpse. Then, as if this was a perfectly normal evening, he just carried on like nothing happened, cleaning his apartment to get rid of the blood, which he struggled to get out of the couch and carpet, and then went to Thanksgiving with his family the next day. Yeah, all sounds like it adds up, right? And guess what? Nah, Apparently almost this exact better. same thing happened a year later, or so Cody claims. This time, it was Cynthia Francis Moss who was killed by an unnamed someone else. These stories are likely further examples of Cody's pathological lying. As it turns out, no one bought his wild stories or his claim that someone else had done all the killing, and he just happened to be there every time. Cody Lejbikov was found guilty on four counts of first-degree murder. Cody was only 19 when he killed for the first time. In British Columbia, first-degree murder carries a mandatory <clears throat> sentence of life without eligibility for parole for 25 years. Cody's sentences will be served concurrently. The four convictions make Cody one of Canada's youngest serial killers. All right, one and a half bars. In case you're curious, six, six. here are eight red flags of a psychopath to look out for. One, superficial charm. 
Psychopaths are generally likable. Their personalities can be engaging and they have the ability to draw in those around them. But you may feel a little twinge in your gut that something is off. 2. Grandiosity The psychopath may be very arrogant and self-centered. Those around them might just think the psychopath is very confident. 3. Need for stimulation Psychopaths crave excitement and they may make frequent changes to their plans. They may appear restless and it may seem like they're surrounded by drama. It's also common for psychopaths to drink alcohol and or use drugs. 4. Pathological lying not only do psychopaths frequently it's also lie, possible. but they don't appear to be bothered when someone catches them in a lie. They may also lie to drama to their plan. So common for psychopaths to drink alcohol and or use drugs. Also common, yeah. Four, pathological lying. Not only do psychopaths frequently lie, but they don't appear to be bothered when someone catches them in a lie. They may also lie just for the sake of lying. Five, manipulation. Psychopaths have an uncanny ability to get other people to do their bidding or give them what they want. They can also be very controlling. 6. Parasitic Lifestyle Most people need help from friends or family from time to time. However, if someone is constantly relying on other people to provide for them financially, that can be a red flag. 7. Promiscuous Behavior and or having many short-term marital relationships Due to a psychopath's high need for stimulation and impulsive behavior, they may have a large number of partners in their history. 8. Refusing to take responsibility Psychopaths try to put the blame on anyone but themselves. They often play the victim in order to manipulate the people around them. Any of these traits alone could be caused by multiple other reasons. However, when these signs are seen together, it can indicate that you may be dealing with a psychopath. Unfortunately, psychopaths are notoriously known for being good at blending into society, so they can be quite difficult to recognize. Sometimes the most important thing you can do is trust your gut. So, if you know much about British Columbia's checkered history of famous serial killers, that last case may not have been too surprising for you. However, I know you won't see today's final case coming. Though it may seem like a typical missing persons case, the dark rumors surrounding it are nothing short of straight out of a horror movie. When a friend couldn't track down 33-year-old Cassidy Rainwater, they reported her missing on August 25, 2021. Cassidy had been staying at a house on Moon Valley Road near Buffalo, Missouri, owned by James Phelps. The last time anyone saw Cassidy was six weeks before she was reported missing, and she was with Phelps at the time. As soon as she was reported missing, police began looking for Cassidy, and an officer went to check the cabin where she was supposed to be staying. The police believe that Cassidy may have been with Phelps as early as the beginning of July. However, there was no sign of her on the property, so the officer left. If only he had looked just a little bit closer. After a week with no other clues to her whereabouts, the investigators headed back to the house on Moon Valley Road. And this time, they'd come across Phelps. Phelps admitted that Cassidy had been staying with him at the cabin until she could get back on her feet but he said it had only been for a short period of time. He claimed that Cassidy was already long gone. She had left at the end of July in the middle of the night when a mysterious car arrived at the house. Phelps said that Cassidy got into the vehicle and left without saying a word to him. He didn't know where she was headed, but told the police that she'd been talking about possibly going to Colorado. Phelps was very clear about one thing though. He said he hadn't seen her since then, but that would turn out not to be the case. Phelps was likely trying to steer investigators away from we his property by giving them information that Cassidy not only left, but likely went out of state, which would make her more difficult to track down. So, even if they hadn't found her, the police had a lead. For two more weeks, no one managed to track down Cassidy in Colorado, or anywhere else for that matter. When a clue about Cassidy finally came in, it wasn't what anyone expected. The FBI received an anonymous cyber tip of photos that showed Cassidy partially naked in a cage but alive, and then another showing her body with evidence of mutilation. They only became more gruesome from there. Another photo was of Cassidy's body bound to a gantry crane device, a machine usually used to process wild game. Just as horrible, other images showed her body being eviscerated and dismembered. It's possible that the killer released these photos to the police as a way of bragging about what they got away with. It's also possible that someone else who knew the killer somehow gained access to the photos, 
but submitted them anonymously out of fear of repercussion from the killer. Cassidy wasn't just missing. She had been killed in the most horrific way possible. A few days after the photos were received, James Phelps and another man, Timothy Norton, were arrested and charged with the felony kidnapping of Cassidy. In the following weeks, skeletal remains were uncovered in Phelps' cabin. The body was determined to be Cassidy. Given the gruesome photos, this wasn't too much of a surprise, even if it wasn't the outcome everyone was hoping for. Her cause of death was later determined to be strangulation. But here's the thing. Evidence shows that Cassidy had actually been killed around July 24th, about a month before she was even reported missing. And that's not all. Investigators claim they found the same scene from the photographs of Cassidy at the Moon Valley Road property. A gantry crane, a cage, and what appeared to be blood. Investigators said that they also found images on Phelps' phone similar to the photos they had been anonymously sent. Most horrifying of all, when the police looked inside of a freezer, they said they found what appeared to be human flesh. Now, that's a lot to stomach, but add in the fact that the human flesh was also dated 724, and we're talking about the kind of stuff you only see in horror movies. Following DNA testing, the remains were identified as Cassidy's. The discovery of human remains in the freezer fueled rumors that her killers allegedly planned to cannibalize her body, or already had. After these discoveries, both Phelps and Norton were officially charged with the first-degree murder of Cassidy and the abandonment of a corpse on top of the kidnapping charge. Police allege that during interrogation, Norton almost immediately confessed that he helped her restrain Cassidy while she was killed. Police say that Norton claimed she was sleeping when she was attacked. Reportedly, Norton stated a plastic bag was placed over her head. At the same time, he physically restrained Cassidy by holding her down for a substantial period of time, while Phelps allegedly Yo, strangled her. Sick, Authorities say that just like the photos showed, Norton told the police that her body was then hung from the gantry crane, where she was disemboweled. The two Jesus. men then allegedly carried her body to a bathtub, where it was dismembered. Phelps, on the other hand, refused to speak to investigators without an attorney, and then refused to answer questions altogether. Still, investigators said they found text messages exchanged between the two men, where they allegedly planned to kill Cassidy on July 24th. Police say that Phelps had asked for Norton's help. This is all the information that has been publicly released by investigators, but there may be more going on with this case. At least, that's the unconfirmed rumor. The case took another turn when on October 4th, 2021, the cabin on Moon Valley Road was set on fire. The responding fire marshals concluded that the fire was a case of arson, and yet no one has been arrested. Two explosive devices made out of mortar tubes, balloon covers, and trip wires were discovered on the property near the house. The sheriff said that the house was totally lost in the fire, and with it, possibly potential evidence in Cassidy's case. As Cassidy was a mother of at least two children, there's been a lot of concern online about what has happened to her kids since her death. It appears that at least one of her children was already in the care of adoptive parents, and his family is trying to protect him from the grisly news of Cassidy's death. For now, it's important to remember that Phelps and Norton have not been found guilty of any crime, and therefore remain innocent unless and until they are found guilty. What's up, guys? Nada. I just want to let you know that, that I'm following myself, you know? Did it immediately play? I actually... It did. Um, I'm gonna use the bathroom quick. We'll probably listen to this one. I mean, I listened to this one like ten times already, but uh, we'll, we'll see. I'll be back.
All right, we back once again. I'm sorry about the dead nice gameplay. Um, yes, I need to. Nah, let's listen to something new, man. I already, li I've listened to this too, 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 too many times. Oh uh, yeah, this one. Um, let's see if JCS has uploaded anything new. JCS. No, nah, bro, it's been so long. The bizarre case of Federico Gondola. Oh, this is JCS inspired. You know, what to go for. Hmm. Let's find a better one. The interrogation. To some, of getting Lewis. married to the love of your life is one of the most joyous occasions one could experience. The start to the next chapter of a relationship, pledging each other's love and devotion to each other in holy matrimony. The flames of passion inextinguishable, the thirst of desire unquenchable. <coughs> However, sometimes <laughs> things change, and sometimes the other person at the altar is a monster in disguise. This is Trisha Todd. She's described by her family as having a vibrant personality, the life of the party, and a beacon of joy for everyone around her. And this is Stephen Williams, Trisha's childhood sweetheart. Both Stephen and Trisha served in the Air Force and began dating during that time, getting married soon after. After 11 years of marriage, the pair chose to divorce, and the resulting split was rather peaceful. Trisha moved with her and Stephen's daughter to Hope Sound, Florida, where Trisha would become a nurse. Things were going great, or so it seemed. On April 26, 2016, Trisha Todd went missing. The police were baffled. Her bank accounts and credit cards had no activity, and her phone had completely stopped communicating with signal towers. Her now ex-husband, Stephen, was very helpful to detectives in the initial stages of the investigation. He was forthcoming with information and was willing to take a polygraph test, which he did, and passed. He was a military man with an impeccable record and genuinely seemed like an innocent man trying to find his daughter's mother. It seemed as if Trisha had vanished into thin air until security footage was uncovered that gave them further insight. Trisha was spotted at a local grocery store on the night of her disappearance, and the items that she bought were seen inside of her home when they searched it, which they also noted had its lights left on. A witness came forward soon after this discovery to provide a statement that would help the police refocus their investigative efforts. The witness said that they had spotted Stephen on the night of Trisha's disappearance driving her car. This one eyewitness account made the investigators backtrack and they immediately shifted their focus back to Stephen. When they narrowed their attention on Stephen, they began to find more and more pieces of information that were easily overlooked on their first glance. After gathering more solid evidence, Marion County sheriffs detained him and brought him in for questioning. They needed to find where Trisha was, and Stephen was the key to that information. What they would soon find out was shock and horrify even the most hardened of detectives, and Trisha's location would ultimately end up not being a simple answer. This is the interrogation of Stephen Williams. The week of April 26, 2016, Stephen Williams traveled from North Carolina to Hope Sound, Florida to spend the week with his daughter Faith. Stephen would tell investigators that their daughter wasn't feeling well and he asked Trisha to come over with the baby. Cell phone records verified this statement. Stephen would state that when the baby fell asleep, Trisha left and that he thought she went home. Trisha was supposed to pick up Faith in the morning, but she never showed up and would later not show up to her nursing job either. This was immediately alarming. Trisha was a highly disciplined person, and this behavior was so uncharacteristic that her family and co-workers would immediately raise concern. Uh, Alright, listen, I wanted, I wanted to kind of talk to you about what's going on with this, okay? And I've been involved with this case from the beginning, okay? And I've seen everything that we have. I've seen all the interviews. And at this point, I know we've come in and we talk to you over and over and over again. We've talked to you in Rawlings, we've talked to you here, and we've always talked about the past. 
what happened that night, what happened that night, what happened that night. What I want to do is I want to kind of talk to you about the future where we're going from here. Okay. Now, I'm, you, you've already heard about all the stuff that we got. I mean, there's no question about what happened that night. We know that it's more than you're telling us. We know that you were involved with, with her death. We know that. Okay. So the question is not what happened or anything like that. What we need to understand is going forward, okay, there's going to be a trial. Okay. There's going to be uh, press. There's going to be everybody looking at this. You've seen how these things they get huge. The media gets involved, and everybody's going to have an opinion about what happened. And everybody's going to have an opinion about you and your relationship and what kind of person you are. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the thing that that we're trying to do is, I, I mean, I talked to you earlier. You're a nice guy. I like you. I mean, I think we could be friends, you know, in di different circumstances. But here's the thing. You know, there's going to be two narratives going forward. Okay? And what I want to do is try to give you the opportunity to kind of tell me more about what narrative actually happened. News of Trisha's disappearance first came out as just a missing persons report. Marion County Sheriff's first impressions were that a normal mom just didn't come home one night and that there was no reason to suspect foul play. Her family notified the Sheriff's Department after she failed to show up to the hospice where she was working. When they went to Trisha's house, in their words, it was like the twilight zone and that Trisha had vanished into thin air. What happened? No one had heard from her. Where's my no bunker one had loot? seen her. But oddly enough, her car wasn't in the right place. There were groceries left on the counter. The lights were on. The sheriff's concern was growing quickly, and they what immediately did? switched into actively searching for Trisha. Okay. The bunker so is up there. What, what we're looking at is, you know, there, there's the one option. Okay. The and bunker the is up there, and it's spilling all the loot outside the map. In, in wow. Here, which is, you know, you, you planned this? You came down here? That was probably my legendary. To, to hurt Trisha? That you, were gonna, that you planned to... Ditch her car here in some calculated way and oh man to now i'm discouraged from even nobody could find her and all that kind of stuff and, finding him again because pretty bad right i mean that could have been my legendary right there man wouldn't agree with that. i'm gonna just okay. feed him one more time then i'm now, gonna farm the warrior for the other bit. alternative is that and like i said we, we know i just want the we know that the bitch you know, man that something beyond what you were telling us happened in the house but i think the more likely story is having seen, I mean, trust me, I've been here, you haven't seen me before involved in this, but I've seen you, okay, I've done a lot of research in your background, and I know what it was like with Trisha, I know what kind of stuff you went through, I know she had a wild streak when she was younger, I know what she did, I mean, she came after you, you know, in that, that domestic thing that happened before, I know how that started, okay, uh, we've seen the reports, we know how it all happened, we know she went back and said no, the whole thing was made up, because she started, okay. The last person to see Trisha, Stephen, said that when she left, she did so on her own accord. There were no problems, everything was amicable, everyone was happy, law enforcement was dumbfounded. What in the world happened to Trisha Todd? With nothing else to go on, investigators looked deeper into some of Trisha's personal items, like personal information on her cell phone, and most importantly, her journal. Inside that journal was information that would come to surprise detectives and simultaneously horrify her family. Trisha wrote about accounts of Stephen's abuse, both physically and mentally. Stephen would take out his aggression not only on his wife, but also on Trisha's dogs. There was even an entry detailing the time that Stephen purposely ended one of her dog's lives, all of whom Trisha loved very much, right in front of her. Stephen wasn't the loving, harmless, well-to-do person he seemed to be on the outside. In fact, Stephen was a monster inside of a human shell. What I think is more to me Having known you, having known the background of everything between you and her, everybody's going to have their own opinion. But I, I can see that I think probably what happened was something more like she started something that night. Okay? And, you know, having known what her background was, having known how she treats you, okay, I've seen text messages. I've seen how, what she says to you, okay? I know what kind of stuff she, she's always bitching you about stuff. I get that. I see that, okay? So I could see how that would kind of go that direction that night. All right. So what I want to do is try to try to set the set the stage so that you can actually tell the narrative about what actually happened, which is not that you planned all this. Okay. Not that you planned down here to come down here and kill her and send her out in the woods like some sort of mass murder. 
murder. I mean, really? I mean, like you're going to go chop her up in little bits or something like that? I mean, that, that seems kind of ridiculous, okay? That seems far-fetched, like you said, okay? And I don't think you planned all this. I don't think you're capable of that, okay? I think what happens is sometimes things just get out of hand, okay? You agree with that? Sometimes, you know, people start doing something, and, and they cause something to happen, okay? And I'm not saying you wanted this to happen, all right? But I know you were there when it happened, okay? What we want to understand is what actually happened that night, okay? And I know you were there, and I know I don't believe it was your fault, okay? The police already had an eyewitness account of Stephen driving Trisha's car near her house on the night of her disappearance, but what they also had was surveillance video. More specifically, they had surveillance footage near Trisha Todd's house that showed a black male with the same build as Stephen, wearing a very large military rucksack on his back, camouflage fatigues, and a skull cap, running through the shadows with what appears to be intent. The incriminating evidence is beginning to pile up higher and higher, but Stephen is almost completely unwavering in his version of events. So, what I imagine something to be, you know, is maybe you guys got in an argument, maybe it was over the computer, maybe it was over the gas, maybe it was over whatever, okay? Any little nitpicky thing that she's going to get on you about, which she always did. I get that, okay? And things got heated, okay? If you're down here to try to see your daughter, okay? You're a good dad. You're trying to be down here to spend time with, with somebody that you care about, your daughter. And Trish is here again, you know, and unfortunately, you know, Faith wants to see Trisha, and Faith is calling for Trisha. I'm sure that doesn't make you feel that good. She's, been, she's trying to spend time with her daughter, okay? okay. No. But, but it's, you know, and Trisha came over, but then things started getting kind of ugly, okay? And I'm sure she started it. And you didn't want to get involved in that, okay? But if she starts pushing things, she's not going to back up. She, she's, she's unrelenting, okay? I've, I've seen this, okay? I've seen the history. I've seen the background of how this works, okay? So what, what I could see happening is that maybe she came at you and, I mean, just defending yourself, she falls. Maybe um, you, you didn't realize how hard you pushed her out of the way, but you're just trying to defend yourself. You see what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you tried to hurt her, but I'm saying that it's clear that Something happened there, and that resulted in Trisha getting injured to the point where she, where she was deceased. Stephen would stick to his story for some time, but he would eventually change his story, finally cracking his credibility with his own words. Stephen would deny knowing how it happened, but would admit that he found Trisha dead, and he was so scared that he chose to dispose of her body. The gaps in logic are obvious, but this is the version of events that Stephen chose to tell Detective Dan Dulak. Not admitting to knowing anything isn't a problem right now. Dulac can continue to work on it as the conversation progresses. The important part is that Stephen has now admitted to knowing that Trisha was no longer alive, and that Stephen has disposed of the body. His involvement in her disappearance is now a fact on both sides of the interrogation. Now it's time for Dulac to press Stephen to confess to the rest of the crimes he has committed. Okay, and then beyond that, I can see putting myself in your shoes for a minute, okay? I see that you're, you're a hard worker, okay? You, you rose through the ranks, you're in the Air Force, you've been there, what, 11, 12 years, you said? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a long time, that's a career. You devoted your life to, to that career, to this country, okay? You've got your daughter to think about, okay? Something happened, it's Trisha's own fault, now she's gone. I mean, there's nothing you can do about that. But what are you gonna do about faith? And like you said, people aren't gonna believe that, that you weren't you know, planning to do this. People aren't going to believe that you weren't intending to hurt her in some way. But sometimes shit just happens. And now here it is. So now you've got to make a choice. Okay? Do you call the cops and roll the dice that we're going to believe your story? Or do you try to do the, you, you go into a little bit of panic mode. And trust me, if I was in the same, I don't know what I would have done. Okay? I couldn't even imagine being in that position. But I can understand going into that, that panic mode of, holy shit, what do I need to do now? The detective tries to explain to Stephen that, all things considered, they have more than enough evidence to take him to trial. All signs point to Stephen. However, he wants to give him a chance to tell his version of events, his truth. 
he positions it as if he tells the truth, he'll give the family some closure and he'll come across as more remorseful instead of a monster. As we've covered in other videos, the police are under no legal obligation to tell the truth during the course of an investigation. With what they have now, they couldn't really take Stephen to trial for first-degree murder with any sort of confidence. Detective Dulac opts to put the pressure on Stephen. This is a risky move. Stephen was a military man after all, but he was not an investigator, and the cards are heavily stacked against him being able to lie his way out of the situation he's currently in. The certainty in Stephen's guilt is ripe, and Detective Dulac is ready to pluck the fruit of justice. And so your first plan, I mean, you told us that you, your plan was that you were just going to take her back to the house and you were going to leave her there, which I understand because she's going to be back by her house and people are going to find her and, you know, then maybe, maybe, they'll, maybe they'll look other where, other places, you know what I mean? And, and I understand that, okay? And that's what you told us, that was, that was kind of your first thought. But that's probably when you saw that Joshua stuff on. So, and and now you're not going to run the risk of him coming out when when this is all going on because I mean that's that's not going to work well for you at all, right? I mean if Joshua comes out and sees all this, he's not going to understand. He's obviously going to think that you planned this and did this intentionally. So, so now we're going to go back to the house, okay? And of course, Trisha, being the way she is, there's no gas. I mean, come on. I mean, how, how much, how hard is it to go fill up a gas tank? I mean, really? It's not that hard. It's not that hard. you got to think ahead about this type of stuff. I never let my gas, my gas tank go below a quarter of a tank. That's me, you know? But I pay attention to that stuff. My wife, she'll run that gas tank out all the time. And then I say, you know, i got to go out in the middle of the night because i got to run and get groceries or something. I'm also getting gas because she didn't think ahead about it. Okay. So, so now, well, obviously, you can't go to the gas tank the gas station in her car because she's in the car. I mean, that's, that's not going to look good, right? So... In what would seem on its surface as a misstep, Dulac speaks nearly nonstop for about a half an hour. Stephen's addition to the conversation is mostly nonverbal affirmations and denials, head shakes and nods. We want Stephen to be the one talking, right? In reality, this is a strategy that interrogators will use to manipulate suspects into believing they have no other viable maneuvers or excuses available. They are led to believe that there is an overwhelming amount of information and evidence against them, and any possible lie, excuse, alibi, or otherwise has already been debunked. Detective Dulac continues talking, mostly speaking in statements or rhetorical questions, and at times repeating himself. Even if Detective Dulac is not telling the truth or repeating something he said a few minutes before, these are essentially inconsequential. The strategy's power lies in the conversation being one-sided with a matter-of-fact tone and overwhelming suspects into ultimately telling the truth. But if you don't tell us the truth about what happened, it just continues to make it look like you're lying to us to cover up something more sinister, for lack of a better word. Like, you intended this to happen, and now you're covering it up. And I don't want that to be the story. Not the story. And I know. And that's why I want you to have this opportunity to tell me the the truth about how she became injured, how that how Trisha lost her life. Yeah, you 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 do. You do, you do. Okay? And I know that you were in Number two, like I, said, I can I can prove. And I you're not you're not hearing me. Okay, you're not hearing me. Okay. I'm not saying that you did anything to her on purpose. I'm not saying that you hurt her. I'm not saying that you laid hands on her, okay? But I do know that you know what happened to her. I know that you know what happened to her. I know you were in, I know you were in the house. I know it, okay? And I can prove that. And I don't want to have to get up on the court and the, and on, the, on the jury in the, in the stand and explain to the jury that even after giving you the opportunity to tell me the truth about what happened, to, to tell me the truth that you're not this cold-blooded murderer who came down here to kill her. We never do that. And you can tell me that, but you continue to tell me a lie about what happened. You continue to tell me a lie about how you found her dead, how she came to be injured like that. You and I know. Look, man, I, I get he he did murder her. But we hear about this. I don't want the last thing that you were able to tell us. Investigators like is, this, is lie about how she I got mean, hurt because that. Is the most important piece of this. There's no I just know I wouldn't be. 
There's no question that she was taken out into the, the woods. But the problem as is collected that the narrative is uh, that the as actions of someone this guy taken? here and if somebody was speaking them, about me assumptuously, you know? I'd be like, why, what, why the fuck are you even... Why are you talking Detective as if I, Black, I even like did it? What the fuck? is well-versed in the read technique, which is the standard method for interrogation. The read technique is especially useful in extracting information from otherwise unwilling suspects due to its application of known average human psychological conditions and weaknesses. While the read technique is structured to be performed technique? in a particular order, detectives will often need to apply the steps in the order that flows with the conversation. People are, after all, vastly different from one another, and forcing a suspect into a rigid conversation will unintentionally create barriers between investigators and suspects. Dulac employs step two, shift the blame from the suspect to a different set of circumstances. He tells Stephen that he doesn't think he did it on purpose, that it might have been an accident, Stephen now has the option to confess to the crime by creating a scenario where Trisha lost her life by accident. Stephen can say that he panicked because he thought this would be looked at as a homicide instead of an accident. He has the option to say that he was scared of how police would view what happened and Call that he hid her body the truth, out of fear and not malice. You. Does any of that matter? Will that make Stephen's punishment or charges any less? Absolutely not, but it's an easier pill for suspects to swallow versus being a cold-blooded murderer. And that's exactly what I'm saying. That's why I'm trying to give you the opportunity to explain to us how it happened that it, because it was not planned. You did not no. attack her. You did no. not try Never. to kill her or try to come down here to kill her. Never. But things happen. And I, we need to understand what it was that happened in that house before the whole gas thing. I know it happened before the gas thing. I know it, it happened before you went to the, this computer thing. I know that's not the truth. I can I can prove that this is not the truth. I need to know the truth. I really like then prove it. How what proof do you have? People that that you're not a serial killer. That you're yeah, some you're psychopath who has no remorse over killing the mother of your child. But you know that's what's going to be in the paper. You know that's I what's going to change. You know that's what's going to be in the paper. Yeah, you see, he's smart. He's smart. I can't change that. that. I can't change what they put in the paper, bro. Anything other than what I've told you. No, you can tell me the truth. And that's the problem. And nothing, nothing, nothing makes it better. Nothing I say makes this better. It will. And it doesn't matter. Because there's a huge difference between we got an argument. It got physical. She started no, it. No, there's she got not, bro. No, there's and not. That's, that's, that's Don't trust cops. Do not no trust no cops, dude. The same scenario. That she is miles. It. That is miles better than I came down here with a backpack with a I backpack. I got stopped by. A, you know, I'm not even gonna say. Ready it. to kill her and drag her out with her lifeless body into the woods. All I will say is, you heard, you heard the I that you do not told. trust most you told, you told police officers. I had a bag. I had clothes. Yes. I had water. Yes. I had all in there. Well, no. Let's say I'm I don't saying. trust a good you amount got the of police bag. officers. And then after all of this hey, done, let's go with the sham, baby. Now you get rid of I got 80% sham. That looks awful. That looks like a bag. That looks like, oh my gosh, she came down here with this bag. And I don't think it With was my other show. I think it was just a bag. It's oh, yeah, it's 80% too. Yes. But literally you need, what it was. But you need to explain. Ah, oh, it's worse than, but if that's the, than the first one I ever got. Explain. Damn it. The, how she got hurt. Okay. And I, listen to me. I know. This one was 86%. I know this is my job. Okay. I know when I when the truth is coming out. And I know All what right. somebody's trying to dance. Well, we got a legendary. Let's, let's, go farm the, let's go farm the Let's go farm the warrior. Okay. Detective Dulac deploys one last strategy to try to make Steven crack. He says that he's a good guy, and that he knows Trisha was a lot to handle. To quit the sham. He sympathizes with Steven, trying to make him feel like he wasn't even to blame, to that Trisha probably provoked him, and of course, bullets. the judge and jury would understand where he's coming from. Steven wants to confess, Chicken but show, he's yeah. understandably terrified of what kind of consequences he could face for you doing know, we're that. Gonna go, we're gonna farm him one more Steven time tells to Dulac that if he tells him another story, Nobody will believe it, because it would now be the third time he's changed his version of events. <clears throat> Stephen probes Dulac to see if he can get an answer that would make him feel more comfortable confessing. Dulac reassures Stephen that people would believe him because he was understandably scared. Who wouldn't be? 
Stephen's defenses are now on thin ice. This plunge into the ice cold waters of confession is near. And I know that's what happened. And I don't blame you because it's scary. Because you don't want to have to think about what happened again. And because you think it's going to make you look bad once we know actually what happened. But I'm telling you right now, whatever happened before, you know, I'll tell you right now, if you came down here with a murder bag and you planned on killing her and burying her out in the woods and hopefully we would never find her again, that's that's not going to look good, okay? Stupid. But I don't think that's. I don't bury someone in the woods. I don't find that. That's why they do all the searching. And, and I don't think that was the plan. But the thing is that if if you leave that empty space for everybody to make up this story about what actually happened and why you were down here and what actually happened to Trisha and your intentions, you know that's what people are going to come up with. And you know, you know that's what everyone's going to say. So you need to take take the opportunity now to set everybody straight to tell us what actually happened in the house. And because sit here and tell you that she attacked me, that's just another different story that you're just going to be like, well, that's five different stories you're telling now. And that doesn't help either. So what do you want me to tell you? What do you want me to tell you, Dave? I want you to tell me the because truth. I'm telling you, I didn't hurt this woman. Okay. I never did anything to injure her or hurt her. My only mistake is I didn't, I didn't just, I didn't just accept that this is the situation and call 911. That's what I should have done. Did, did she I attack didn't you? take her to the hospital. I should have just did that. Instead, I just panicked and I just tried to, I tried to get away from it all. Well, I wanted, I just wanted nothing to do with all that. But you panicked. That's not me. And I just panicked. I just you panicked, panicked because of what happened because you thought it would come back on you. Because it did, it does. Like in the past, even I didn't do anything to her, but so just people, because of how it. But looked. here's the thing: people fall down all the time. People get hurt, okay? It's not uncommon, okay? And that, and we can we can find that out. That's that's not something that's difficult to determine, okay? There's people that get go to a lot of school and they get paid a lot of money to figure out exactly what happened to somebody, okay? And I know you don't believe. I think that. I'm gonna I go find myself a new. Uh, I get that, but a new Harold. I know that what you're telling us about coming back from the gas station. I know that's a lie. I know that, that's so. a lie, and I can prove that's a lie. And I don't want that to be the last lie that you tell us. I need you to tell us the truth. You do. And I know you, I know you do. It's another story. And no matter what I tell you, it's not going to be the truth according to you. So what do you want me to tell you here's then? The, here's the thing about the story, okay? Every time you tell us some version of what happens, it gets closer to the truth. And I appreciate that because so you... then I say, oh, yeah, she attacked me. You come back in here and like, okay, so you attacked her. Like, no, that's not what I said. So then you're just going to have me going down this rabbit hole of different stories now. I, I don't want that either. Like I, I, like I told you, okay, I, I can prove, I can prove one thing, okay? I can prove that you were at the house with Trisha when she was All right, there. wow. I yeah, can prove that. I'm definitely going to need to be for this. So this the question summer. lies with you as to you're the only one who was there with her. Like I said, you're the only person who can tell too. us what happened. So this is your opportunity to tell us what happened in the house before you left, because that's when I know she was injured, and I can prove that. What I need to know is what happened in the house, because I know what you're telling me is a lie, and I can prove that. But if you stick with that story, and I can prove that it's a lie, everyone's going to assume the worst. They assume the worst? That, if, I, if I sit here and say, yeah, we argued, she attacked me, then they're just going to assume, okay, you being the bigger, stronger person, you hit her, or you did something to her, or you, you in some way hurt her, and that... I never, ever would do I'm, that. I'm not asking I you to, I'm didn't not come asking down you to make up a story. Murder bag. I didn't come down here with some dubious plan. See, I didn't. Ha- exactly. I'm not that kind of person. And that's and that's what I'm saying is that you're not that type of person. But by continuing to lie to us about <laughs> what happened and when it happened, you're opening that door for everyone to assume it, and you know everyone's going to assume it. You know, I just be I like at this point, you know what? Oh, you know what? I don't care. I don't care, bro. Believe what you want, man. But I didn't kill her. It wasn't me. Whatever. With the express intent to kill Trisha, I'd be like, you know what? There's no sense in talking to this guy. He's a psychopath, and he's and he's not even he's not worth anybody's time. That's why we're divorced. But I'm not gonna murder the woman. But I'm not gonna. That's that's why I want to come in here and talk to you and try to give you the opportunity to set the record straight and tell us the truth about what happened with Trisha. Because I know what you're telling us right now is a lie. And I don't want you to be stuck in this lie. 
Because once I write it in I'd be my like, why do you care if done. I'm stuck in a lie or not, bro? This You're literally trying to incriminate me. And that's what does it matter true. to you? But I can prove that's not true. That's not how I want to end this report. Because everybody wants to know what happened to Trisha. If Trisha had an accident, if Trisha came at you when she fell, you clearly had an accident. I didn't do anything so, to her. I'm so telling what, you I didn't do anything. So what happened? I never hurt her. I never, I didn't push her. I didn't shove her. I didn't do anything to that woman. So what, hurt her. so what happened? I didn't do anything. I'm not saying you did anything. Um, okay then. So why are you why do you keep is, asking me what happened? Because I don't know. Because like I said, I know you were in the house. I don't know what happened. When it happened. I know you know what I happened. I know you were there. No, nah, I don't know what happened. That you were there. I can prove you that you know what happened. The truth about what happened. Nah, now, you can't. Then prove it. Then you're prove gonna have then. to forever live with the fact that you lied about it, and then it's gonna come out in court that we know he was in the house and he's lying about it, and that looks awful. That looks like you knew exactly what you were doing. That you need to cover this up because what you did was so horrible that nobody would understand. Yeah, I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case at all. Then why even go with that if you know that's not the case? I'm not, saying, that I'm not saying that's what I think. I'm telling you, you know that's what everybody else is going to think. You know that I'm telling you what you know. CNN and Fox News, okay, they're, they're going to put, they they they're gonna put your, your mugshot up there regardless and of what I You said. leave that void. You leave that Probably one of the worst interrogation tactics ever. Want. Not gonna lie. Because you're gonna worry regardless of what I tell you. You're gonna keep the, the news, the news, the news You're gonna keep the guy on the defensive. Yeah, they, they won't because they can get in big trouble. Oh, I if you, if we that. have evidence that you said that <clears> you know, she attacked you and that it was an accident or something like that, whatever the narrative is that you tell us, and we can say, you know what, this is this is the closest thing that we can get to the truth. We believe this to be the closest thing to the truth because you can never find the absolute truth. It's very, very difficult, okay? But the thing is that if we're sitting here and we can know that you're lying to us, that leaves this giant gaping hole where anybody can put whatever they want in that because a lie is a lie. It's not the truth. If we know, well, that's not the truth, what goes there? What fills in that spot? That's, I don't think you did. I don't think you did. I didn't have a murder bag. I don't think you did. I don't think, know anything about this. You know, I don't know. You know it looks like it, that. Oh, it looks bad looks from the get-go. That's bad. why I panicked from That's the get-go, because why, it looks so bad. But you need to take this opportunity to tell me the truth, because I, I mm -hmm. don't want you to have to live with the fact that you lied to us about this whole gas all thing. All this cash. And all this cash. There's no, but there's no point. With there is a bands. point. There is a point. Because this uh, is a huge 1100 bands. difference. I don't know. Because, I don't know because someday in the not too distant future, machine gun. you're going to not, not, don't worry about the media. Don't worry what about What happened to Bunker? Don't worry about, about all that stuff. That's that's stuff. Really not you're going to have a jury that's my deciding your fate. Why did he sludge? No. Why is he sludging so far? Where the hell did he go? Wow. Hi, Bunker. Then they're going to be like, well, what happened to the other I two, see. three stories he told? Why wasn't this the story? Because you were scared. I'm I scared understand you're scared. Now. I was scared then. I'm scared now. You've been scared throughout this entire thing. Your actions look like somebody who's planned this and look like somebody who came down here to murder you. But I can yes, see they're actually the actions like. of and someone who was scared. But you need to explain to them that you didn't just come home and you saw that she fell uh, down Gearbox and you got fix scared. Your game, please, bro. That's literally that's, unplayable. That doesn't make literally sense Literally game, game, game breaking. They're not, they're not going to buy this. They're, they're not going to believe anything. you. <clears throat> I just, and they're not going to buy anything. They're going to believe the truth. They're going to believe the truth. All of it from the get-go was just just unbelievable. Yeah. All of it from the get-go was one of those, like, I'm living a nightmare. I'm living some shitty lifetime movie special is what I'm living in. Bullshit, because I would never hurt that woman. I would never. So tell us. So tell us. So tell us what happened. happened in that house. Yeah. What actually happened in that house. You need you. The only way that we're going to be able to move forward from this is for you to, to. to because I'm, I'm telling you, I'm being straight up with you. I'm being honest with you. Okay. I've done this investigation. I have all this forensic evidence. Okay. We have a bunch of people who have gone through all of this forensic evidence, and we can see. What you're telling us the truth about and what you're not telling us the truth about. And I can tell you right now, the biggest glaring lie is that I know that you're lying about that she she was already on the ground when you came home. I know that's not true. I All know right. that's not true. And I can prove that in a court of law to be not true. So you have to take this opportunity. I'm giving you this huge clue. Hey, 
you need to tell us what warriors. actually happened here. Where do I go to fight the warriors? If I can prove that you're lying, now you're you're going to leave it in the Heroes hands Pass? of a jury of a bunch of people who have been watching the news about what they talk about you, and then <sighs> you're going to let them decide and fill in that hole about what happened to Trisha. You think they're just going to say, oh, yeah, she must have just fallen down and bumped her head. You think that's what they're going to think? No. No, because you're not telling them what actually happened. You're not telling me what actually happened. I just feel like if I do, then it's just another story. It's so just another story of what happened. It's another version of what happened. Everything is a story. Piece. Everything, everybody has their own. It goes into like the docket file of, well, we can't believe a word this guy said no. now because no. you lied because at the beginning, you lied in the middle, and now you're probably still lying in the end. No, because and we need to understand, because... I, I don't want to leave you here hanging out here with this lie, this glaring lie that I know is not is not the truth. Because if you take this opportunity to talk to me, I will listen to you. I will listen. I will believe your truth. It doesn't matter. Okay. It does. Like you have for the past right fucking hour. Who do you think has to defile all this stuff to the state attorney? Myself, the other detectives. We have to listen to you. That's my job. No. If I have, like I said, if I had my mind made up. I came here with some murder If I had my mind made up. I would not be in here talking to you right now because I don't believe – I talked to you earlier. We had a good conversation about the Air Force and all the cool stuff that you've done, the cool places you've been. Yeah, you're a good guy, okay? I think you're a nice guy. I don't think you're this cold-blooded murderer, okay? But you're not giving us the opportunity to tell the story that actually happened. I know you do. I know you do. plan this But with Trisha – with Trisha, things always go sideways with her. You try to do the right thing with her, and then she's off cheek on you with some other dude. You try to do the right thing with her, and then she's pushing your buttons up against the wall with this key thing, and she gets you in trouble. And then the next thing I know, I saw that she was she's talking to your, your commanding officer's wife or something about you being with his girlfriend. I saw all this stuff. She's always pushing your buttons. She's always... I always just try to do the right And right you are thing. trying to do the right thing. Try to be a good okay. person. And then here it is. You're trying work. to be a good person. And it's still not working. And she not comes in. Work. And here she comes and to take care of Faith. Work because work. Faith is just... I mean, and Faith is sick. I get that. That's, I have a kid. Okay? And not much older than Faith. And that is a stressful thing. Never called her to anyone. have to deal with a kid. It's it's in the middle of the night. Who wants their mommy. And they will not take no for an answer. She wouldn't. That's stressful. That, and I, that just felt like, that would, like, who am I to deny you your mother? That would push anybody's buttons. That would put anybody on edge. Trust me, I've been there. Sometimes my kid starts screaming, I want my mommy, I want my mommy. Well, and it's like, that was my daughter. I, I know. I just said, I don't get, ups I don't get upset no, with it. Was never honestly, upset with her. honestly it, it makes me feel a little upset. At myself, because why am I not good enough for well, my own daughter? Exactly. You know? I'm not there enough, and I know that. I wish I could be there more, but I, I can't. It's just the circumstances. I, I can't change that, you know, how often I can be there. So I just do what I can. But, no, I'm not upset that she wants her money. That's and, fine. And I get that. And I get that. And so you try to be the, again, you're trying to be the nice guy. Trying you're trying to do the right thing. Do right for, thing. for your daughter now? Yeah, for Faith? You care about her. You want to talk to her all the time. She wants her mommy. You know what? You don't really like Trisha. You don't want to see her in the middle of the night. You don't want her to come back over. No, but you know what? You will make that sacrifice for your daughter. Of course I would. And then when she shows up, she's probably got an attitude. What? What? I mean, what's her deal? I'll never know what her deal is. She always has her own agendas. I don't. I just try to ignore them. I just. I just pretend that whatever she says is just take it as a grain of salt and move on. I and and I know she's got. I don't feed into it. I don't. I don't ask questions. I don't answer things. I just. I just smile and nod kind of thing. I but sometimes she won't, she won't take that. Well, no, that's just her personality. And she's going to keep pushing because she's got, she's got to end the conversation. And she's got to get to some her. resolution. And I let her. And she's going to keep prodding and poking about whatever the stupid thing is that she's upset about. Okay? And I get that. Okay? We, we all understand that. We've all been there. Okay? So, and, and I understand how this. I think you should go farm Lee the, first, obviously. The atmosphere of that night. And I can't, do that. I can't blame you, okay, for panicking after all of this. Okay, but you've got no way. But the right Stephen, to Stephen, <laughs> but, I, but I want to tell you right now, okay? You need some guidance sometimes. You weren't sure what to do. I can tell you right now, the We're right thing to do spawn right off the bat. is to tell us what actually happened. It is. It's gonna. It's. It's going to help you enormously. It's, it's, 
I, I know you think that the truth is gonna is gonna make it look so much worse. Okay, but it, I can tell you right now, the truth is never anywhere near as bad as what people will believe if you let them come up with their own story. No one believes a hater. I never hated her. I didn't. So like tell her. me. So happened. tell me that story. Tell me what happened. Tell me what happened so that I can I can tell them. And, but it was, and you tried, and I know you did. Even after she was off with this other dude, you you brought the family back together. You had a child with her to try to create this happy family. Even though you didn't really want to, but you you did. You tried so hard. Okay, and I get that. And I get that, and I appreciate that. I think you're a good guy. You're a family man. You're trying. You're trying to do the best that you can. Okay. You got a you got a career, okay? You provide. You're a good guy. I mean, especially you know, there's a lot of people that, that you know they don't even they don't even try. They abandon their kids. They they don't get a job. They're out drink, drinking, doing drugs, all kinds of shit. But you're you're not that guy. Be the right, do the right thing, and be a good person, and try to be a good father from a distance, I guess. I, and you did, know. and you were doing a good job, okay? But sometimes people throw monkey wrenches into your plans, okay? And you're trying to do the best that you can. You're trying, and I can see that. And I, like I said, I've seen all your guys' communication, all your text messages, and how you talk to each other. And she was, she was trying you. I mean, she was. I mean, you wanted to talk to your daughter. You wanted to be there for your, because you don't want to just abandon your child. No, you don't no. want her to not have a ch have a father. You're to doing a good job. As best as I could. You and know, so, I know, like because of the military and. We're living in Florida. I can't always be there, but yeah, I'll try to be there as much as I can. And that's why that night you gave in. You said yes. I know. I have a daughter. Daughters always get what they want, no matter what. They always get what they want, no matter if you don't want it or not. She wanted mommy. I'm gonna go boil me some noodles. Yeah, you know, you so I know that your plan was not. I mean, you, I mean, how ridiculous is that? You planned to have a sick child. You planned to have your child call for the mother in the middle of the night. Planned to take a stupid trip to the but hospital. People are no. going to believe that if you let them. They're going to believe how do you. Plan you, that? you so plan for your child to be sick in the so, middle of the night. So I know you, you think don't. that the truth is going to sound worse, but you know it's not. You know it's not going to sound worse. You know it can't be worse than this narrative that people are creating about you. It's only that people are already saying everything that. else already. I've already told too many different freaking versions. You told you me. told versions because you panicked. Because you were scared. People can understand that. Scared. People can understand that. But at a certain point, you have to realize it because you're afraid you're afraid that you're gonna get prison for caught, you're gonna get blamed, you're gonna get you're gonna get in trouble. But I can tell you right now we're there. We're there. My life. Okay. You're prison. you're here with us, not be because of what happened, and we need to understand the truth about what happened. All right, I'm back. Because I know you're scared. I know you're scared about what's going to happen in the future. But before you were panicking, because Ooh, we you didn't want one. anybody to know you were involved. You didn't want anybody to know you were there. You wanted it to go away. Oh, that wanted. that is a normal human response. That's what anybody would do in that situation. That you're panicking. That you're panicking. That's that's a that's a it's a reasonable that's a reasonable thought process that people can understand. But what we can't get past is you continuing to, to lie about what happened. And I can't let you continue to lie about what happened. I need you to tell me the truth about what happened. I know you were there. I want to give you the opportunity to tell me what happened. It seems as if Detective Dulak has finally broken through to Stephen. He oh, is ready to confess in full for nice. the first time since Trisha went missing. I got the, the Dulac cram, now stops talking a... and lets Stephen share another version of the truth about the night the of April 26, of bullets, I 2016. I believe I'm using the cram right now. I am. 22? 28, baby. That was after B, though. 67. One more level. Halfway there. <clears throat> Alright, we're gonna drop our double penetrating. Oh, you know what? We'll just... No, 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 no! Come back! I'm gonna keep all legendaries. Uh, I was gonna sell that, but... Nah. I don't know. And, and it's impossible for somebody who's outside 
to understand sometimes. But you, you've got to let us know the truth about what happened so that you can move past this. For yourself, right, well, you've got, I got, what you I got wanted. to wait, get this weight off of your shoulders. And honestly, I was going to be happy with either because the cramps or the double penetrating. And you so can't, I'm going to go to the warrior now. You, you, or I think I'm going to farm bunker until I get to the next level so I can at least use this. You still have a daughter. You are still a father. It's Harold. You still have somebody you're responsible for. Okay? And you can't... You, in, in one way or another, I can't... I, no, that's not true. It's... And... and, and and, and don't think that's the truth, okay? I can't guarantee you what's going to happen, okay? I, it's not up to me. But what I can do is I can tell you that we need to know the truth, that faith needs to know the truth about what happened, that everyone, the families, they need to know what happened because you cannot let everyone else make up their story. Do you want faith to come up with some story? Do you want her to believe these stories that people are going to spin about you because you continue to lie to us about what happened that night. I know you were there. I know you know the truth. You need to tell us so that we can just put a pin in this and say, now we know the truth. It does. It does. It's going to. Because, because it, cannot, it cannot get worse than what people make up. I tell you that. I, you would not believe... People tonight, well, you will, but I mean, people we'll farm one more time, see if we can get a double watch, penetrating, and they will come up with the most horrific thing. I don't even know where, dude. This, look at these phones. Just, what the heck? just happened. talk, just talk happened. to me about from midnight. He texted her, face, face, face. Was was I would have never texted her otherwise. It was right. already late, and she had already left. I would have never texted her. And you're a good dad, so you wanted her, you wanted to give faith what she wanted. That's it. That's all I was trying to do was just be a good dad. Just okay, you want your mom? Fine. Like, I'm not going to deny you that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so I said, yeah, faith wants you, you know, just come by. That's fine. And then, no, I never liked her around. I never liked being in one on one situation with her because I could never predict her. I don't know the version of her I'm getting at that moment. And so, no, I never liked being in a one on one situation just right. because, just like now, there's always something to find order or work or whatever. <laughs> I can't change how things freaking look. Boom. Right. He dropped it. So, yeah, she came over. She <laughs> what? And then she just started talking about the stiff, huh? And bringing up child support. Well, I'm just expanding my collection. More huh? Stupid stuff. And I just, for the most part, tried to. You know what? I'm and actually. Yeah, there was a mix up with the chat. I won't that's drop not them. My fault because you told but me I will sell them to Marcus. So, yeah, that's where I mailed it to. And then she was telling me that's not the mailing address. So, what am I. I'm like, that's okay. not my fault. If you told me you moved, We're gonna sell. I did the responsible thing and I made sure the check was going to go wherever you moved to if you're not at your mom's house. And then yeah. she's just going on and on about now I owe her more money and back child support and just. And I'm just no, I want to like, collect all the heralds. Though. Then I'll fix it. I'll send you another. I'll do something, but I don't have the money now. So just okay. give me some bye time, bye. like because e that money, since you didn't get it on time, is already bye bye. It's Dobby Drew. Here and now I need a little more time to get it to you. And now she's talking about how she's going to go to court and all this other stuff, and it's my fault. And I'm just like, this isn't even my fault. Like you told me you moved, so Last I month, adjusted yeah. it. Like just calm down. Like this isn't even that serious. This is an easily rectifiable. Why are you getting all my hand about this? I don't you have know? a stiff, right? And 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 yeah, I know I didn't go. I think I saw my last stiff. Cram, cram, but every time intense. I tried, it was just double penetrating. Stonewall me. It's like I don't want to do that because I haven't paid money to send you money, which is stupid. I was like, just oh. let me have. Oh, and I can use a stiff. Just the account so <clears> less bullets, higher damage. Happen. No, that was that's not going to work, and you can't do that. You owe me all this money. And then she's got to go to court and she's paying all the other money Three, from the divorce. Four, five, six, I already seven, took eight, over nine. So ten, nine bullets, like twenty something thousand dollars in debt that I was have to pay back right in eighteen months. And then if I don't pay all that back, I got another six thousand dollars I got to pay as far as back child support that I should try okay, to pay, pay all see. that back. Excuse me. And Fire rate's the same, like, less accurate, higher damage. Why are you so mad right now? Like, and is it a small I amount. Yep. Just, I'll take it. it. Completely got out of hand, and then just the whole pointing and the the I just it just all went bad. It just so fast. She just went from zero to a hundred, and I'm trying to understand like what just happened. Like you were just here earlier, everything was fine. You left. 
I only called you because Faith wanted you, and now we're arguing about something that I'm sitting here thinking this is unbelievably trivial, and this can be fixed. I can fix this by the first. Just give me time, and I'll make sure you get the money, or I'll make it a two-separate payment, or whatever you need me to do, and it's just not, it's just not good. It's not going to work. None of this works. So then, you know, we, we leave Faith on the couch. And she eventually falls asleep anyway, but she's still, like, arguing with me over in the, the, the warrior area. And I'm just like, just please just leave then. Just go. No, I'm not leaving until we fix this. Like, just get out. Like, I don't, I don't know what you want from me, Trisha. I don't have any money for you. I don't have any cash for you. I can't give you anything right now. I spent the little right. money I had, which is why I drove here. Gonna save and quit. Just to see if we don't get a lease That's bond, I didn't fly. I didn't get a we're gonna go. Like I'm not in a hotel. We're gonna go back to bunker. I'm gonna do a hotel thing, but I don't have money. Like mm -hmm. I just paid so much money to the debt, but I don't have any more money. Okay, I just don't. I am like pretty much strapped when it comes to cash. But paycheck to paycheck, I no, think we got it. I'm not making it right now. All right, no lease bond. It's just, it's just, it doesn't matter. You owe me money. You need to pay your debt. This is always your fault. You're always spending all my money. You know what? Oh, I no, think I'm no, just going to go. Oh, now I'm just trying to, like, walk away. Yeah. I can't walk away. I'm going to hear us trying to confront the warrior. You're jumping in front of my face. And you just, it, it just got so it's aggressive. Nice and I'm just trying honestly. to back away. Have to make a trip. De escalate And I can't even leave the house now. You know, I don't want to push you. I don't want to touch you. I don't want anything with you because all I'm having, I'm just thinking about flashbacks of before. When you just blew oh, that kill skill. I mean, that, that's, no reason, that's skill. And now I'm getting arrested, but only after the fact did you go and, you know, say that it wasn't my fault. No no one else knows that now, but only after the fact that I got arrested. All I'm thinking, I'm just, I'm just flashbacks. Like, look, I go to push her away, and then she gets really pissed about that. And then she gets even more aggressive and in my face and pushing me back. And I'm like, would you please just stop? Like, I don't want, I don't want this. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why you're so mad. I don't know if you, if you took a freaking crazy pill on the way over here and that really pissed her off. And uh, it just, it just escalated. And then I just moved her away and then she slipped. And that's when she freaking fell. And I'm like, oh shit. I asked her if she was okay. It was like a weird sound. She didn't say anything though. And then I freaking panicked. Uh -oh. And then I, I just freaking panicked. I didn't, re I didn't try to hurt you. I just wanted you to stop being here in my face and yelling at me as I'm trying to back away. I'm trying to de-escalate. I don't want... Whatever this is, it's not It's not this serious. I don't know why it's so serious about this money. It's always been so, like, even throughout the divorce, every penny, it's just been so serious about her trying to get every dollar. Right. And I'm like, and now I made a mistake and I sent the check to the wrong address because I didn't know that wasn't a mailing address. And I'm, I can't explain where it is. I didn't even get it back in the mail until a week after that. And it just, it just went so fast. And then I pushed her. And I didn't push, push. I was just trying to get her away. Just please stop yelling in my face. It's like, just, you know, like, if she was at that distance, fine. But she wasn't. She's just right here the thing. whole time. And I'm like, please, just stop. And so I went to move her away. And she slipped. And she hit her head. And I didn't mean for that. That wasn't my freaking fault. I wasn't... And then all I'm thinking is, great, now I've pushed her, and she's hurt her head, and, and I'm done. I'm just, everything I've tried to do, everything I've tried to be, is done because I made a mistake. I didn't even really even lose my cool. I just tried to move you away. I just did <laughs> The crocodile tears are rolling down Stephen's face as he explains the night of the crime. When Trisha arrived with their daughter, she confronted him about past due child support payments. Stephen claims that he didn't want to argue with her anymore, and out of frustration, punched her. Stephen what? says it was this punch that would cause her to fall, hit her head, he her. and ultimately end her life. Stephen has directly admitted to being responsible for the physical act that caused Trisha to fall and pass away, but Dulac knows that this is a bit too convenient. Stephen still seems ingenuine about his story. Dulac trusts his hunch and begins to press Stephen about his story. I just tried to de-escalate the situation because I couldn't get out. I didn't know where to go. I didn't even just leave. Like, all I wanted to do was just leave. I just wanted nothing to do with that. Do you know what she hit her head on? Was it the floor or? I don't know. It just, she just fell. And then she just wasn't responsive after that. And I didn't want to have to do 
You know, I thought I was gonna call the police now. I was gonna say, I'm freaking poisoned. I'm going to the tent. <laughs> so, so what were? You, what did you do next? I didn't try. I like. I just tried to wake her. I tried to like, snap her out of it, and just it just kept getting worse. She just she just wasn't responding. Or she had she made weird breathing sounds, and I'm thinking, oh shit, I don't want to kill. I don't want to kill. I'm killing you. Let's see the I sham here. Never wanted to hurt. Never. And I don't think you did. I never wanted her to be hurt. I, I never wished ill on her. I tried to always do right by her, no matter what the situation. I just tried to do the right thing. And all I'm saying is, I'm going to jail for, for trying not to hurt you. What's going on right there? And that's, I mean, that, that's exactly why I wanted you to tell me. Easter egg? I just wanted it to stop. I wanted it to go away. I just wanted to just go back. I just <laughs> okay. And 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 that I believe you. I believe everything that you just told me. Okay, Stephen. <laughs> it does. It makes it makes a huge difference because that's that's what we need to do. We need to get to the truth about what happened. Now you know the, you know the next question I'm going to ask you. Okay. And I know you don't want to, don't but we need to know where know. Trisha is. I don't know. And I, 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 I really don't, don't have a freaking clue where that was. I just, I just, I just panicked and I just drove. And I know, and I, I, I know. I went through a million and one scenarios in my head of what to do, and none of them were good. All of them just ended bad. You know, okay. I, just, I didn't pay attention to anything. I just drove, and as I drove, I just... I didn't, I didn't read any signs, I didn't, I just drove, and I just tried to think of how to fix it, and I couldn't fix it, and it was just bad all around, and I'm just like, no matter what, I'm screwed, like, I am screwed no matter what, I can't go back, I can't, I can't go to the hospital now, if I do, how does that look, I don't even know what to do at this point, I'm just freaking out, because I didn't want any of this, I didn't want anything to do with any of that, I understand. <laughs> All right, and Stephen, I wanna, I wanna help you do the best you can from here. Okay, and I know shit happens. It does. It does. It happens to good people. Okay, it doesn't make you a bad person. But I don't know where she is, and I can't take her to where she but is, you, and I'm so screwed. We got to try I to can't remember. Remember that I don't know where that was. I just okay. it was just a random place. I had no idea where I well, was. Let me let me try to let me just try to understand through the rest of the the evening. Okay, the the, the first the first that you said you went through several scenarios. I just tried to figure out what I was going to do. I didn't know what to do. I just. The first just scenario. Fear and panic is all I had. Just panic and pure fear because I just this is not what Even I wanted this. with my life. I didn't. I just tried so hard to do so good and to fix the shit that was wrong, and it was a uphill battle. But I was fixing it. It was getting fixed. My life was getting better. I had moved on. I had my job. I had my career. I was happy with my girlfriend. I just everything was fine. I was so so fine. So good. It's a horrible, horrible accident that sometimes these things, these types of things happen, and they happen to good people. And we got to try to get through to do the best that we can from here. Okay. Well, let me let me just understand the rest of the night. So you told us your first idea was to go take her in the car to her house, right? Take her home. And just but then you saw what Joshua was there. I just saw a vehicle. I didn't know whose vehicle that was. This was didn't know what to do, but I just kept okay. driving. I just well, is that, is that when you went back because it was out of gas or low on gas? Yeah, because I didn't know where to go after that, okay. and I didn't know what to do, and I just called the police then, I guess. But even then, I was like, well, now I've already left, so now what does this look like? Right, and, and it, it just snowballed. It just got so out of control so bad, no matter what I'm about to do, it just makes it worse. So try to, try to help me, and I want to try to help you think through this. You went back, you got the gas and then you put the gas in the car, okay? You went out of the neighborhood. 
Where did you go? Nowhere you left. You, you went. You went south. You turned. Drove. You turned right. Right. I just went. Just turned the right, okay. and then I just we, drove trying to think of what to do and where know, to go and how, I know. how to make it right. And then every everything was wrong. Everything right. at that point was wrong. And but here's the thing, think. Stephen. I know that you. I know you don't think you remember, but I know you remember. If we can work through this, I think you can figure this out. Okay. I don't so just 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 work with me for a minute, okay? So you went. You, you know where Bridge Road is, right? The main the main road. Yeah. Okay. When you got to the the bridge road that goes to the beach to the left, right? Yeah. Did you turn right or did you go straight? I'm pretty sure I turned right, but it's everything I saw out there doesn't look like anything. It's just I don't remember anything that I saw out there. I just remember it was Do you remember going under a bridge? I don't know. I just I just ate and I just drove and I just tried to think and just clear my head and figure it out and what now and then I just realize that I'm screwed like I'm just okay. done there's nothing I can I'm just going to prison like screw so it I'm going to prison no matter what I do at this point and just, it just Steven says he has no idea where he left Trisha's body he has no idea hint general location nothing He's trying his absolute best to avoid giving any straight answers to Dulac because, well, Stephen still isn't telling the truth, as we'll soon find out. Stephen knows that when they find Trisha, his fate is sealed. He will die in prison one way or another. This is the last hill, and Stephen has now decided to, figuratively, die on it. Stephen says to Dulac that Trisha looked calm and peaceful as he left her body deep in the woods. So you drove for, you drove for a while. Right? Yeah. And, and, and I get that. That's a lot to think about. That's a lot to, to carry around with you. Okay? And this has got to have been tough for you these last couple weeks. <laughs> I wanted to sell it. I don't know how to sell it. It's already so and that's, far back. That's, no, so it's, far it's back. never too late. It's, it's never too late. Okay? And that's why I wanted to give you this opportunity because it's, I want you to tell us the truth. I want you to have that opportunity. But I didn't hurt her. But, I didn't. It, I never. <laughs> Here's here's what I need. We we have murder so so many people, so many people are are looking for her and want to know where she is. Okay. Would you? Would you oh, well, I should have got that. I should have got that. Bacon lamb. Well, no. I know. You, I know you don't think you know, but I, know I, I need know. you to give us. I need you to give us an honest effort to try to remember. Just, so you drove. Might just run past the constructor then. Let, 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 hold on, Steve. Let me just let me just talk through this a little bit, okay? So you drove for a while while you were thinking. Did you turn anywhere? Dad, I just for a moment I just faced. I just I just saw rows and I just drove. I didn't want to think. I didn't want anything. I just it just was just zoned out. Okay. Just nothing. Just. Okay, because so you don't, you don't remember... Sheer fear and panic, and I just don't know what I should do. Or Okay, when you, get to the, the, when you get to the end of that dirt road, you turn down a dirt road somewhere, right? Okay, I, I know you remember this part, okay. When you get there, what do you see around you? Well, was it was grass it, and trees and just nothing was it like a Was it like a forest? I don't know. It was just was it far. like a swamp? I couldn't tell you how thick or how far it went. I just got was to it a, was it a farmland? Stop, and then I just got out, and then I didn't know what to do. I knew wherever I was at was way too far to walk, most likely, because I don't even know where the heck I am. Right. And it's just dark, and I can't see anything. What they? Wow! Really they purposely put a wall there. What the I heck? Know, I don't know. Could you what see? It could you see the main road from where you were at all? No, I don't. Okay. Even, it was so dark the other direction. Stay with me. How long, even know, how long do you think you were off the main road? Okay. I just wanted, you, you said before that you, you changed your clothes in a little building. Where was that? It was this little thing near where I parked your car. I just, I just changed near her house? more clothes behind it. Near her house or near where you left Trisha? Her house. I drove back, and then I just you changed so for sure. Back. For sure, I can't. I didn't know what else to do, and I just like well, the bag is closed. Yep, that's on, such bull. I didn't okay. know what to do. I just, just 
And Stephen, okay, here's, here's the next thing that I need to understand. When you when you got to where Trisha was, were ended up, how how did you where did you put her? Okay. Okay. Stay with me. Was she in water? No. Was there water anywhere nearby? I don't think so. I don't. I didn't hear water. I don't. We know how a lot of them have like the little ravines and canals and stuff that run along them. You didn't see anything like that? I didn't notice any of that. It's okay. Just, I just remember it was really did she dark, and I just took her out, and she just looked peaceful and sweet. Like, what I remember her, you know, the way I would like to remember her. Why don't I ever talk bad about her? I feel yeah. like, I feel, I, not like love, love, but I care hey, open about door. her. You had a life like, with this just person. Just in I, case. I was, I was married 11 years to her. Yeah. Of course I still care. Mm-hmm. And you created a life with this person. I, it's, it's, you're always going to have some peace together. And I get that. I get that. No matter what else happens, the money and all that other stuff. Just didn't want to and that's, that's why we need to... She just looked peaceful. We need to do everything that we can to, to just, bring her home now. I know what happened happened. Just I know, and that's peaceful. done. It's in the past, and that's what I want. And I told you in the beginning... I want to talk about the future with you. I'm, we're done talking about the past. We know what happened in the past. We need to get beyond that. We we need to find her. We need to bring her home. I don't know. I honestly, honestly, after all this time, every day I there get home thinking the day I'm, they're going to come. Vault of the Warrior, baby. The There's no way they're not going to find her. I don't, I don't even know where I left her. Did you? I didn't even try to cover her up. I just, right. I just laid her down. So she I was hoping beyond belief that she would be okay. I didn't. I, just well, didn't. You, I mean, you knew, you knew she was peaceful. You knew she was at peace at that time. I, I mean, I know you were hoping. I, was I know you were hoping, was but small. but you knew. You knew that it was not the case. And it's 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 horrible and it's unfortunate. But like you said, and that's that's just what happens. And bad things happen. But so you're telling me you did not cover her up at all. I didn't even did think you? to. I didn't even know what to. I didn't know what to do with her. I just, okay. just everything. I thought like, okay, if I bring her back, but then it's like, why did you go anywhere in the first place? And then it's like, if I go to the hospital, then I don't know how to explain to them that I didn't do this to her. And it's just all done so bad. I just wanted it all to end. I just wanted this the whole thing to just stop and just go back. Okay, and I know I know this is tough, and this is something that you don't want to go back to, but I need you to try to think really hard about what it was like there, okay? Because we've got to do this. We've got to bring her home, and I need yeah, you to help us I, do that. If I could take you, I would take you I know. so I could show you that. I know, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get you to help me. I'm trying to help you to remember what you can. Five weeks would pass after Stephen's confession and thousands of man-hours of a massive search had turned out fruitless. There was still no sign of Trisha Todd. Stephen was charged with a murder and accepted a plea deal in exchange for giving a full confession about yeah. what happened between him and Trisha and where her final resting place was. Stephen would receive 35 years in prison. They thought their ultimate goal was to find her body and give her a proper burial. Investigators believe that Stephen had actually strangled Trisha instead of his story about her hitting her head after being punched. After signing his plea deal, right, Stephen would confess my... that he packed her remains in a two by three foot plastic box. He then journey. drove to the Hungryland Wildlife Reserve with Trisha in the container. Stephen Ouch. removed her, filled the container with acid, and dismembered her body with a chainsaw Jesus. to make sure she fit into the box. Stephen then led authorities back to the reserve and planted a flag on the three foot grave he had dug for her. How long did you did you sit in the car once you got there? Yes, I just, I was just that stopped for, and I saw it, and then it just it was just, that for a long time that you saw. No I just once I got down to the third road, I kind of realized like I don't even know where the hell I am. I don't even know where this road is going. I just I just kind of stopped after a bit. I just stopped, and that's why it was dusty because when I stopped, the dust caught up or whatever, and then it just I just didn't know what to do. It, Heck, why did the back of the car and just sit in the back seat? And I, okay, try, try, to, try to think. I know you don't want to push yourself there, but push yourself there for a minute and think. Try to look around and tell me. <clears throat> you, you've got to try to remember what it looked like there. I know it's dark. It's, a narrow, it's black, but it's you could tell. Area, could you, could you see the stars? Movie. It was kind of a full moon, no, no, mostly yeah. full moon that night. Did you really, see the moon? I don't remember looking for the moon. I never thought to look at it. I just... 
but that's going to give you a little bit of light at that time. Did you see? Did you see farmland? Did you see animals? I couldn't see anything. I just, just it was shrubbery. It was, you know, it was foliage around, but I don't know what kind of foliage. I don't know how thick the foliage was. And it wasn't real tall. It wasn't like trees, was, real tall trees. There were some. It wasn't like what are they like pine trees? It wasn't like that, but it wasn't like they weren't like bushes. I don't, I don't even know what kind of trees there were. I just know it wasn't like, it wasn't a forest. Forest, it just, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. I just was the road, was the road straight or did it curve at all? It was straight. I'm pretty sure it was straight. It was just like a straight it shot? It might have had a slight curve or, I don't know, just a slight, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's not, I don't know, not like a razor straight. It just, did you remember passing any buildings? No. No? I couldn't see anything out there, and that's why they, they just kind of stopped. But I can't see anything. It's, the headlights are on. I can't see anything. I don't know. Stay with me. Nothing out here. Like, okay. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just, there's nothing. That, so you know, now you're now you need after after you um, take her out of the car, you need to get back to her place. Okay. Yeah, How? I needed to get back. I didn't even really know where I was going to go at that point. I just. God. I just so figured try to out where the heck I was, and I just went back to the road. I just turned around and I went back the direction I came. Okay. And then after now that, think I came about that. Was that road. was that? So you just drove, drove down that one dirty, that one dusty road. I just drove that, and then yeah. you hit the main road. And I hit the main road, and I figured was I'll that turn left. was probably Bridge Road again. I just, oh, I just figured I would turn left because left made sense. Mm -hmm. And so I just drove, and even then, I don't know where, none of that stuff out there made sense, because I didn't see anything, I just rode, you know, just rode, hard road. And then eventually, I knew where I was at, because I was back at the main intersection, and I'm like, this makes sense, I know where I am, because I've, I've seen that main intersection. So from where she was, you turned left, and went straight, and eventually came back to the bridge it road, hard road, and road so federal highway. Turned left, because if it's a hard road, I figured maybe this is back the way I came. Mm -hmm. Left made sense. I just turned left and I drove. And none of it looked familiar. None of it, none of it, I didn't so see any signs even. I just drove left. It was, I don't know, it was just, I figured left would be back. How long do you think you drove? I know you don't know exactly the time, but was it, you, you can remember minutes? It's just a while. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour, an hour. You didn't have that much gas. So, I don't think you drove an hour each way, did you? I don't think so. I don't know how long it was. But it was a lot. I just remember going left and I'm on a hard road, so I just to follow it to see where it goes. When you I came to realize where I am, and I did. And so I was like, well, I'm back in town. And then I didn't know what to do, so I just could get back to her house. Do you remember going under the highway? At Bridge Road, there's, the, uh, I'm pretty sure it's under, everybody sits under that bridge. <laughs> but yeah, that's, the, the, just, do you remember, I thought it was over. But that's, that's 95, do you remember passing 95? I remember going over a bridge, I don't remember under a bridge. It was an over, but not, I don't remember being under. under. Do you remember going over a bridge though? I remember over, yes. I think there's a railroad bridge that you go over. How far past that bridge that you went over do you remember? Did you go a long ways past that? The whole night felt like an eternity. But, but you drove for a while? I mean, just, just try to remember as best you can. Did you, you yeah. drove for a while after you went over that bridge? Yeah, I don't know how far. It just felt far. I don't remember. Okay. Is there anything else you can remember about where you were at? When, when you left her, anything else around? Any, anything that you can remember to try to help her find her? Even hardened law enforcement veterans weren't prepared for the horrors that would be unearthed. A team dug up the container, opened it, and saw Trisha's torso inside. Tiny parts of Trisha's body, including teeth and fingertips that Stephen had removed to prevent her from being identified, were found yeah. scattered around oh, the yeah. area, mixed in with gravel and shell rock. Divers also found Stephen's mutilation tools lying at the bottom of this canal, including the chainsaw and reciprocating saw that he had used to cut her up. Inside of the reciprocating saw was Trisha's hair and some of her remains as well. 
Investigators would also learn that it was actually well planned before he even left his North Carolina air base to visit their daughter in Florida. Prior to leaving Raleigh, Officer North Carolina, Radio, Stephen had purchased the acid and Are traveled to Florida arm? with it. Yeah, the road wasn't super wide, like it's, you know, the, the three-point turn or whatever. But I didn't pay attention to anything when I was there. I just, I just wanted to get back. Wherever back was, I just wanted to get back, and I wanted the night to just be over. I just wanted everything to just be done. I just, that's it all. Okay. Um, I'm going to do my best, okay? But you know, you know there's a lot of people that, Okay. All right, I think I'm gonna end the stream and here. I, I, would never come down. I know you didn't craziness like that. And I know you That's didn't want time. to. I know you didn't want. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. I know that was almost got to level seven. It was good. But but the thing is that, that that's a result of the Thank you for joining me, pimp. Thank you all for watching. Trisha's family. I will catch you the next stream. Bye bye. Community.